Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mirror Musk. Episode 54, the Sean McCorkle interview. Sean, it is huh. a pleasure to have you on today. I appreciate you guys having me. If I could get this damn microphone stand to work, it would work out. Maybe I shouldn't use the microphone stand for my phone, but either way. Yeah, it's it is what problems. it is. So, so for uh, all of our fans out there who aren't familiar with uh, Big Sexy McCorkle, former UFC heavyweight, uh, MMA extraordinaire, also the CEO of PF Chang's, the king of the homeless cats, and now he's uh, transitioned into a life of breeding high end American bulldogs. So we're gonna cover. We're gonna try to get into all that, but. I've been following him forever. He's also, to me, he's on the Mount Rushmore of fighters that are funny. He, he does a podcast with uh, Adam Hunter, stand-up comedian, and he's got jokes. He's got, um, not trying to set you up for jokes or anything, but he, he can <laughs> flow. He, he, he's, a, he's a dude. So, um, yeah, welcome, man. And uh, let's let's just get into it to start. Uh, how did how did you go from playing basketball to getting into fighting? It was, I don't know, man. I'm probably like a lot of guys. I, like a lot of dudes think they could probably fight, but I always thought I really could. Like, uh, like, oh, I'd beat that dude in a fight when you watch him on TV and stuff like that. But it turns out I was right. I actually could fight. But no, I uh, so I played basketball in college, and that was it. I quit after my sophomore year. And every uh, everybody that would see me everywhere I go, because I started lifting weights a lot, so I was six, seven, and in decent shape at 310 pounds and people would be like, so you didn't do anything? Like you didn't do pro wrestling, football, anything? I'd be like, well, I played basketball in college. I'm like, yeah, but that's it. And I always felt for years, like, sorry to disappoint you, you know, but like, well, if I was your size, I'd have, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, it was everybody. So I actually, to make a really long story short, um, I sold my business when I was 28. I started a business after I quit college um, and sold it when I was 28 for enough money. I never had to work again. And um, if my ex-wife wasn't so expensive anyway, and <laughs> yeah. started taking jujitsu just for exercise. And it just always interested me, you know, like learning to, uh, you know, like just learning to fight. I thought it was interesting because I was a huge UFC fan. And then it turned out I was really good at fighting, like Happy Gilmore, like at the right. uh, go golf range, you know, like I submitted uh, Marcelo Montero, who was our teacher, who's the biggest scam artist in the jujitsu world. But um, he was, uh, he was the local guy here, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy, the only guy teaching here locally. And I submitted him on our, my first trial class, like in front of everyone. Of course I had him by about 150 pounds, but nevertheless, like I got him in submission, submitted him and, um, he had, he was real butthurt about it. But when he got over it, he eventually said, why don't you fight? And I was like, dude, I'm a millionaire. You're crazy. I would never fight. You know, like those guys don't get paid almost anything. Like at the time I knew Chris Lytle, he was getting paid 3000 to fight and 3000 to win, which is probably close to what he finished up at when he retired also. Uh, right. with what the UFC was paying back then. But um, I, uh, yeah, though I, I just, and I was decent at boxing for somebody who had never done it. And uh, so I decided to pay my dad back. He would never let me play football. Uh, so it was too dangerous growing up. So I was like, you know, I'll show you what dangerous is. And took one fight, not as a joke, but like as a bucket list thing. And then just knocked a guy out in 30 seconds and then thought, I'll try one more. Knocked a guy, another, you know, another guy out in 30 seconds. I was like, it can't be this easy. Um and then um, just kept at it here and there, never fighting anybody worth anything. But uh, Monty Cox called me one night, said the UFC wants to know. I think I was 10-0 and 0 at the time. You want to fight when they come to Indianapolis, which is my hometown, at UFC 119? And I was like, not really. And uh, he's like, you don't want to fight the UFC? I said, I'm not trying to get beat up for $3,000, you know? Like, right. you guys are crazy, you know? Um, and they offered me 8-8 eight and eight for my first fight, which still wasn't that much. Uh, but they said it would be another first-time UFC guy. So what they told me. So I was like, oh, okay. I was thinking another guy who was 5-0 and or 8-0 and or whatever. It turns out it was Mark Hunt. Uh, technically his first fight in UFC, but they scammed me, you know. Because uh, yeah. I, I signed the bout agreement, or I signed the contract before I signed the agreement. And then when they faxed it over, I was like, I called Monty, uh, who I don't even know if you guys know who that is, but he managed like 200 UFC fighters at one point. Um, I called him. I said, is that like Mark Hunt from Iowa or something? Like, I know that's not Mark Hunt from Pride fighting the – K1 World Kickboxing Champion, and then I'm fighting for $8,000 and going to get knocked out in front of my whole family, right? <laughs> um, and uh, he was like, well, that's him, but if you get him on the ground, I'm like, well, if I don't, though, it's going to be a problem, you know? So, right. um, but I went and decided I'd do it for the heck of it and then went out and broke his arm like in a minute and five seconds or a minute and three seconds, something like that, and uh, changed my life overnight. And it got, it got really weird, like really weird after that, like uh, 10,000 Facebook friend requests, 50,000 Twitter followers, and a bunch of weirdos, man. Like really, weird. 
yeah. <laughs> you beat an international superstar like Mark Hunt, and not even at the end of his career, probably right in the prime of it. Yeah. That's gonna well, that's yeah, gonna he get won six, he, he won six in a row after I beat him in the UFC, and I never let anybody forget that. Like I kept saying, they were saying, "Oh, he he sucked. He had just lost to Fedor." I was like, "Yeah, I beat him eight times faster than Fedor, though." So uh, right. you know, I, had, I had the math down for every single every single a match, like three times faster than Alistair Overeem. Like I had it on everything, but uh, I was never delusional like Brendan Schaub is and was. Like I I trained with Jake O'Brien who got beat by Cain Velasquez in 90 seconds and Jake would beat me up in training. So I was I had a pretty good idea of where I stood overall, you know, with, with guys. So All Right. Well, could you imagine if uh, Schaub would have gotten some once in a lifetime uh, uh, win over Mark Hunt? He'd bring it up every day. Kind of like he does the Crow Cop one, but he, yeah. times 10, you know. Yeah, he would never let it go. That's why I used to tell people I had it on loop at my house, but uh, I don't. Uh, but it's funny, man. The whole UFC thing kind of got ruined for me all the way around. Like, I'm, I'm cross-eyed on the video game. Like, I look like a cross-eyed Christopher Walken on the video game. I don't know what happened. But I saw that. I started wondering for a while if I was cross-eyed, you know? So you guys tell me if you notice I'm cross-eyed because I'm still trying to know. But if you look at my character, I'm cross-eyed. And so I show it to my son. Like, I was like, hey, dude, I'm like, he's nine years old. I'm like, look, I'm on the video game. They just told me. And he looks at it, he goes, why are you cross-eyed? He's only nine. I was like, damn it. <laughs> like, so, God damn it. <laughs> we, get, we get the uh, game in the mail, uh, which is about all I got for it. I got $2,000 in the game, which I thought I, I thought it was a joke. Like I thought that was like, just kidding, we're giving you $200,000. You know? like, uh, but $2,000 is not very much for being on a video game compared to the WWE or NFL or NBA. But um, right. they uh, sent me a check and said, because of my loyalty, they blessed me with a $2,000 check. And if I accept it, I'm further accepting their ridiculous licensing rights that I signed away. Um, but my son puts it in. I go to make a phone call. I come back in and I'm, it's me and Cain Velasquez fighting. I'm like, dude, you got to push triangle and square to get up. I'm trying to instruct him. And he goes, uh, dad, I'm Cain. And I was like, <laughs> Wait, you're, I said, you're playing against me on the game. He goes, dad, no offense. You're the third worst heavyweight on here. Like you're 83 overall. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you little bastard. Like, I didn't say that, but I said, you little bastard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not excited a bit if my dad was on a game, but I have literally never played the game. After they, when I saw that check, and after my yeah. son did that, I was like, I don't, I don't even have any interest in playing it. Plus, yeah, I'm the third worst heavyweight on there. I can't beat anybody. So, right. The fucking UFC, bro. Yeah. I am yes. on that. I'm on that class action suit, apparently, uh, that they just settled. I don't know if you guys saw that. They're going to give $335 million to 1200 fighters so if it's anything like the rest of what i got for ufc it'll probably be like 12 dollars total i'll get it could <laughs> yeah. be like 200 grand a fighter after legal fees or 300 grand like something crazy but uh yeah i qualified for that but uh, my top trading cards i got seven dollars and 67 cents uh my video game 2000 so like I, i'm not expecting a lot from this class action suit so yeah it's one of those things especially back then it was a. Uh... Not quite the wild, wild west of like the early 2000s and 90s, but um, now it's starting to come together with all this corporate money and different things yeah. happening. I, I don't know if it's actually better for the fighters or it's just the top guys are doing better. It's hard to tell, but you're yeah. still watching it a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, I, I watch it for free now if, I, if anyone ever sends me, allegedly, if anyone ever sends me a... Uh... yeah. A link because I just refuse, man, to pay for ESPN Plus, and then you have to pay for the pay per view, and then you have to watch commercials for movies on the pay per view. And now, I don't know if you guys noticed, I thought they had taken the wrap off a of NASCAR and put it on the Octagon last night. There yeah, had oh, to be, shit, there what? Had to be seventy sponsors on that on that Octagon, man. Like literally sixty to seventy. And the, the way I heard it was that guys had to wear Venom shorts with no sponsors because it was distracting and it's a bad look to have sponsors on the shorts but apparently it's okay if they're plastered all over the cage and octagon those are fine you know it, but, it's getting yeah. crazy man curve it was I, it was a new one i saw it's like a type of men's cologne it was on yeah. the top and then yeah i i i was uh super into the ufc i i, would, I wouldn't miss an event for a while and i've kind of fallen off on my fandom but i did yeah. check out saturday and man there were some really really nice bouts that uh that happened at ufc 300 um what what was your takeaways from watching that what'd you like that you saw out there that i really wish i hadn't started gambling on mma again because was like <laughs> I, for a while dude i went i made a mistake i went on a streak of like eight months where i could not lose like on mma fights and mm. so then i went on a streak of a year where i could not win but i kept thinking if i can just get hot again i can get all that money back but then i right. like totaled up at the end of the year and realized how much i had lost betting on fights like it was over 10 grand i had lost betting on fights, oh, like, even including my wins you know what i mean so 
I was like, I got to quit doing that. So I broke it uh, the other night because I was sure of two things. Either Gaethje would win by knockout or it would go to a decision. And so I bet it both ways. And, of course, the only thing that couldn't, you know, could beat me is like Holloway winning by knockout with one second left, beat me on a parlay that paid like 60 to one. So I had like, you know, 50 bucks on a 61 that would have paid three grand. But yeah, that's a, that fight was crazy. I, I hate the eye pokes, man. I wish there was, I wish there was some penalty on eye pokes. I mean, if you accidentally foul in the NBA, it's still a foul, you know, like right. you get penalized. This stuff of, oh, that's a strong warning or this is your last warning. Like, I don't know if you guys have been poked in the eye before like that, but in a fight, it changes everything. No. Like, completely. God, it changes everything, man. Um, I still have double vision in my left eye from getting poked in the eye in Japan against Satoshi Ishii. Um, and that's been 10 years. And I still have double vision. If I look up, like I see, you know, two um, of everything, which is, I guess, what double vision is. I don't know why I explained it to you. But um, so uh, I, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, it, it, they, when he poked him twice in the eye, I was like, dude, I don't know how he's going to win this fight. You know, like it's uh, at that point, but no penalty, no point taken, no anything, just a strong warning, you know? And I think the casual fans don't realize it, but if you look back in history, you brought up John Jones, famous eye poker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and has had great success. Someone else who I, I'm pretty sure Adesanya has gotten this fair amount of pokes in yeah. over the years. Um, and I remember what's his face, uh, Usman. It, it can, when these guys are so closely uh, matched, they can swing the whole fight. Yeah. Uh, and I poke. So I think it should be a point the first time, accidental or not, should be a point takeaway. Second time should be disqualification. Because I can tell you in my 27 career fights, I never poked anybody even once. But I was poked probably ten times. So it's, it is a technique guys use. They love the, the when they love to grab the back of your head too and use their thumb in your eye. Like a lot of guys do that when they go to reach for the back of your head, they let their you know thumb scrape across your eye. So I got that repeatedly in fights where I was getting poked. Uh, so it's guys. intentional then. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of them things. That's what they they say. It's because they box with box, you know, with they spar boxing gloves and you're used to keeping your hand open, and okay. that's what it does. But if those guys, they're all trying. I mean, dude, that's what uh, my brother. I got a brother that's a meth head. That's really really funny. Um, hopefully he won't watch this, but um, he told me his new fighting style. He said after years of watching Kung Fu movies and watching UFC, he said he doesn't even have to like train jujitsu or anything. He can beat anybody. He said he's just going to fight like this from now on, <laughs> like that. And he said because all you got to do is poke somebody in the eye and the fight's over. And it really is true, man. It's it's brutal. Like in a fight when uh, you don't feel a lot when you're fighting that hurts, but that's when you see guys turn and hold their eye or like turn out like and you know start blinking. Like if you feel it that much in a fight, that means it really really hurts. You know, right. So, yeah, so that was that was a wild uh, um, fight. Of course, the last ten seconds are just almost out of a movie, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, Yuri Prohaska uh, fight. Did you see that one? Where yeah, he beat? He's, a, he's amazing. I thought he, uh, I thought he got not robbed, but I thought they stopped it too early. His fight where he lost the title. Um, I thought they stopped it against uh, Pereira. That's who. He, that's who he lost to, right? Yeah, or Pereira. Um, I think he's the best 205 pound fighter in the world, man. Even even over Pierre, I think he is. Um, I think uh, he's definitely more well rounded. But he's that guy is just he's up from another planet, man. Like his uh, his haircut's awesome too. But uh, yeah, his uh, his striking is so strange and unorthodox. Comes from weird angles. It's kind of overused, but it really does, man. He comes from really odd angles with that stuff. And um, plus, he's just awesome. His personality is awesome. So uh, he seems like he's a little bit slow. That may just be the language gap, but he seems like he's mentally just yeah. a little bit. A little slow, so I always root for those guys, the underdog. But yeah, no, he's he's one of my favorite guys to watch fight. Me too, man. Yeah, and it might also just be that way his face looks. You know, sometimes right. guys just have that <laughs> dumb looking face. You know, not that he's it's bad so looking, weird but that. so I just said that we had a my same meth brother. I told you about does meth. Um, not long ago, I was talking to him, and I we had seen a mutual friend at an auction, and the guy had obviously had a stroke or something. So half of his face was frozen, which that's not. Funny. <laughs> but I mean, well, if you knew the guy, it's a little bit funny. Uh, right. But um, half his face was frozen. He was talking to me, only half it was moving. And so when he walked away, um, I asked my brother, the one that smokes a lot of meth, I said, hey, what happened to Neil? And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, what, like, what's the deal like with his face? Like, did he have a stroke or something? He goes, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's just how he ended up looking. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I think it's just how he ended up looking. And he's like, you know, some people just look weird. And I was like, I, I know, dude. I knew him when he was 28 years old. He's only 32 now. You know what I mean? like, you know, right, like, he didn't just end up looking half of his face frozen. Like, but, uh, my brother was furious. Like he was, he's also the same brother that used to tell me he was a mailbox when we were kids. His like previous life, he was a mailbox. 
and he would talk about how boring it was. <laughs> and he would never laugh. Like, we're little kids. He goes, yeah, I used to be a mailbox. Man, that's a terrible life. Can you imagine 12 years of just being a mailbox? How old was he doing <laughs> but, this? And it was, dude, and he he was – I had three different people – I want to go into meth stories, but they're pretty good. I had uh, three different people tell me, hey, is your brother dressed up like an elf and run around the woods ever? And this is when he's 20-something years old. And I was like, not that I know of, why? And the guy's like, oh, never mind. And then another person asked me that like a week later, and I said, I don't get the joke. What's the joke? And he's like, well, I was just curious. I said, did you see him like that? He goes, oh, I don't want to talk about it, man. But I think they were a little bit afraid of him. So they probably should be. So a third guy tells me, he goes, hey, does your brother ever dress like an elf? And I was like, what is the joke? I don't, I don't get the joke. Like, I don't, I don't, what is it? Right. I don't know. And uh, he goes, oh, I just, I thought I saw him the other day. And so I asked my brother about it. He's like, what? Like, he's acting like he has no idea what I'm talking about. I was like, maybe that's just how you end up looking, like an elf. But no, <laughs> right. um, he's like, I don't know, what? And he would always act real surprised. So he ends up getting locked up for armed robbery over a pack of cigarettes. Hey. And I have to help him clean. I have to help my mom clean out his apartment. Really long story. But as we're cleaning out the last drawer I open up because he was getting kicked out of his apartment, there was a pair of synthetic elf ears and an elf hat. And this was like 10 years <laughs> after people were asking oh, shit. that or whatever. So not only had he dressed like an elf, he was continuing to dress like an elf. And right. he had like ears and like rubber ears and a hat and all kind of like a little wand. I don't know if elves have wands, but you know, no. <laughs> so yeah, maybe he was too, but he uh the more her baby that was after i don't know if that was before or after the mailbox i never really got the timeline but you ever give him shit for it no because he denies it he's like i don't know what <laughs> he, denies it still. he denies it and he's lost he's like he's a good looking dude or was but he's lost all his teeth from smoking bath oh, and my shit. mom said listen i'll buy you like new teeth if you want like new teeth and he goes i really rather just wait till i can afford gold ones and he's dead <laughs> serious like he's only got like two teeth and he's dead serious that he'd rather wait and he, he's only he just turned 50 he still looks young. I mean, it's for 50, he looks really young, but right. he's like, he's just that guy, man. He's, yeah, is he he's, tall like you? Is he pretty he's like, six four, yeah. Um, yeah. And just, uh, he's always kind of been in his own world though, but he, I mean, I, I could go on for days about him, man. The guy is something else. Like he's got, uh, yeah, he was an alpha. He, uh, he said after he was the mailbox, he was a pelican for a while, but uh, he got real tired of that. And he just had like, <laughs> but he would never smile. Like when we were kids, like he would never laugh when he would talk about it. He would tell you this whole story about it. And just be deadpan. Uh, yeah, and just be dead serious. But he was too young, like nine years old, to be to be making up that he was a mailbox. But he was talking about now. He's like, yeah, I don't remember that. And I'm like, you know damn well you remember that. You know? Is he still like welcomed around the family? He yeah, was... like yeah. Okay, cool. He's uh, although he kind of put a damper on Thanksgiving this year. He uh, they had the turkey there or a, the turkey there and a ham next to it, and the ham had, they'd only cut four or five pieces, and there was a knife there, and someone else was using it for the turkey. So he pulls out a switchblade, like we're in the outsider or something. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out switch plate, flicks and cuts off his own piece of ham, and everybody's sitting there like, I'm not eating that ham now. Nobody knows where that switch plate's been. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he was obviously on meth at the time. Like, when he was there, he was talking real fast and uh, talked even faster than me. I tend to talk fast, but I don't take meth yet anyway. I've heard it. Great <laughs> right no, I was going to say, but, they probably got good meth down in Indiana, right? Yeah, I, that's what I hear, man. I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, I almost shot a meth head. I moved out in the country and almost shot a meth head. The second day I lived here, like literally my, I am out there with an AR-15 pointed at some girl who looked like she just climbed out of the well in the ring, like in my pole barn. It's a right. long story, but my son went live on TikTok. My same son that did, wasn't impressed with me on the video game goes live with me pointing a gun at a girl on TikTok and then flips it back to his face. And he's like, what the hell? And he flips it back to himself. And my jeans were falling down. I didn't have a belt on, so they were slowly sliding down <laughs> my hips. As I'm, I'll send you guys a video after this. As I'm pointing a gun to girl, they're slowly <laughs> sliding down, like my pants almost to my knees. And I'm like, when the cops get here, I'm going to have my pants around my ankles, holding a gun at this girl, you know, like it's going to look bad. So right. it got <laughs> weird, man. But yeah, that was the second day I lived down here. I got out of Indianapolis just because of the crime and then end up almost shooting a mess head in my pole barn the second day I lived on 20 Jesus acres down here in the middle of nowhere. So. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, you, you fought in the UFC and now you're doing a little bit of podcasting with – uh stand-up comedian adam hunter and yes. he actually removed me from the podcast lately can you believe that wait really? what he removed he, you yeah i guess uh i don't want to trash what you like, do bro for a long time but he he got super offended <laughs> i tend to step over the line if you can't tell yet but i tend to go overboard sometimes over the line right. in jokes which whatever i mean like would you call him a faggot or something? No, no, I, I did after he told me he didn't want to have me on anymore. Um, but no, it's uh, like I always like if you search my name, one of the first things that comes up is Sean McCorkle would do gay porn for the right time. <laughs> one of the top headlines. And then I 
I made a joke in an interview one time that I smothered my grandma with a pillow to end her <laughs> at the end of cancer. She had just died. I don't know if you've seen, there's a video called Sean McCorkle's The Funniest Man Alive, and someone had put together my highlights of just the most, I was on Percocet during that one, so I don't take full blame. I had taken like three Percocet for my back, and then Tim Sylvie wanted to buy me shots at a fight. And I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't think you want to mix like tequila with Percocet. And like, turns out I was wrong. It's an awesome mix. Um, right. But, <laughs> yeah, bro. Um, yeah, like it, I was at 13 shots in and three Percocet and then Spanish TV wanted to uh, interview me and I was like, sure, like, I don't care. I was like, this is not going to air in the United States, right? And they're like, no. So I told them my they're grandma like, oh, just died no. and I tried to convince them I smothered her with a pillow to ease her suffering and then <laughs> it's a great interview. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, so I go overboard, but I sent Adam a thing. I thought it was funny the other day. They have, uh, you know how people on the internet, though, especially the chain guys, the funniest, some of them are the funniest people ever. They aren't even famous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they're just really funny. So somebody who put on a page, they said, what is something kids had in the 50s they don't have today? And of course, every answer is like respect. Uh, somebody put bruises on their ass from being spanked. Um, yeah, basic somebody shit. Put, it, it started getting more and more like jokey. And so I put the correct views on segregation. Like, yeah. I thought that was funny. Like, obviously, I'm not yeah. serious on it, you know? Yeah, it's uh, satire. So I, yeah, I put the correct views on segregation. And uh, I sent it to Adam. He's like, dude, you need to delete that. You're going to get canceled. I was like, dude, I'm not famous enough to get canceled. And please right. cancel me. Like, someone, please, just so I can not apologize. Like, ever. Well, I will never apologize. You'll probably blow up if they do that shit to you, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah, better for you. But I told him I have no ad. He goes, and Adam's worried about it. He's like, dude, I just worry, like, with us having a podcast together, like, if someone saw that, I'm like, what are they going to do? Not like you? Like, right. you know what I mean? Or whatever. It's, I'm the one that said it. I didn't post it on his page. And he's like, well, I just do. That could really come back to bite me. I was like, well, I don't have to be on the podcast anymore. He's like, no, I'm not saying that. I said, no, it's good, man. We don't have to. We don't have to do it anymore. I'll just, um, I'll cost you 90% of your views. But, you know, whatever. Because <laughs> before I was on there, it wasn't doing so well. And then it kind of started blowing up once I got on there. But only because me and Don Fryer are on there. And we say really funny stuff. Like, Right, uh, you say out of pocket yeah. shit. Yeah, you yeah know, but I mean, I wonder. I told, I told Adam, I was like, dude, you're still friends with Dana White, right? And didn't he get in trouble for smacking his wife? And you had Colby Covington on, who says things far more offensive than I've ever thought about saying. Right, you know? and it's serious. And then we had another comedian on there named Greg uh, Romero, and I got an argument with him on abortion one time on there. He said that even if one pinky toe of the baby's in, it's still not a baby if it's inside the mother. I said, so if someone cut off that baby's head with a machete and the toe's still in, they shouldn't be charged with murder, even if the mom wants the baby, right? And he was like, no. And I said, okay, that's offensive to me, that you say cutting off a baby's head that's 99% out of the mother isn't a crime, but you're upset that I said as a joke, segregation, you know what I mean? Like, uh, right. you know, it's like, but it's, it because he was like, you don't really think that, do you? I said, do you think if I thought segregation should still be around, that I would not only post that on the internet, but send it to you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, look how... Look at my politics, you know what I mean, or whatever. Like, it's so obviously it was a joke, and it wasn't even nearly the most offensive thing on there. So, yeah, he, uh, I just told him he'd be better if I just don't get on there because I don't, I don't, I don't need someone policing what I write online. Like, you right. know, if I, if I embarrass my kids, which I have numerous times by an 83 rating on the UFC, video, on the- <laughs> it's the most embarrassing thing I did. But if I embarrass right. my kids or mom, then I would apologize to them, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to apologize if people don't know how to take a joke. You don't need the Gestapo on your ass. You're yeah, good, that's what I'm man. saying. And while I'm going to worry every week now, would I post just on a random Facebook page? You know, like, no, fuck that. It's well, his, I mean, yeah, comedians are like, they're all so afraid of that they're shit. He's not even there, high. Man. It's not like he's a like super high level podcast with tons of huge sponsors or anything. Like, he's right. not like, you know, so it's, and podcasts are supposed to be for like, what you, you know, you, you get your niche of whatever it is. And you're, that's your comedy. It's not even, uh, stepping right. over any line, so and it's never, yeah, it's never meant. I've always said it's never meant to hurt anybody's feelings, unless it's friend shop. I like hurting his feelings, <laughs> but uh, it's never, uh, I could tell you guys the whole shop thing is going to get into why I don't like him, but I mean, other than the obvious, yeah. I definitely like, need to know so, this stuff because we've had him at Hallmark Harley on. So, so I for, yeah, I don't want to run what order you do it in, so take your time with whatever. No, you let's do. let's do it because, uh, for to me, you're you, I think that you're definitely on the Mount Rushmore of funniest fighters. And uh, the only guy who can really even compete with you is probably Shale. Yeah, he was always. That's why I told Shale. He's telling me all the time. I really appreciate you stealing my material because he would take my. When I was a lot less famous than him, which I still am, but when I was first in the UFC, he would take a lot of my stuff and use it. And then he would tweet me like privately and be like, "How'd you like your line last night?" Like and like he he was using my stuff, you know, or whatever. But he had the one one time where he said. Uh, 
I, I he stole it for me, but after a fight, he said he wanted to thank himself for all his hard work de- and dedication because without <laughs> him, it wouldn't have been possible. And that was word for word my line, you know, right, from, right, uh, from an interview I did. And uh, but yeah, he'd always be like doing more with your material than you ever will, bitch. Like just give me a hard time. But I love Chael. He's awesome, man. He's a uh, he's awesome in person. So even even more awesome than uh, on the phone. So. So, okay, this is what happened from my recollection. Brendan Schaub's uh, doing Fighter and the Kid with, uh, he's just a straight man. He's a fighter still, and he's doing his podcast with Brian Callen. He gets the Rogan hype and all that. And you start noticing him uh, maybe around this time before he even starts to get into comedy, right? And you start chipping him a little bit, right? Yeah, he was always taking shots at me all the time, just small stuff. He got mad and originally a long time ago started. Because him and Mitch Rione were going to fight, and me and Mitch Rione were friends. Actually, I was Mitch Rione's friend. He never did much for me. But um, I was Matt Mitch Rione's friend. Um, and he was like, dude, you, uh, will you give me some stuff to write about Shab? We're going to, like we've agreed, we're going to, you know, um, we're going to uh, talk much trash this fight. And he said, you're better at than me. And I was like, well, what's he okay with? Because I can go over the line, like I said. And he goes, dude, he said anything. It doesn't hurt his feelings at all. So um, the very first thing I came up with was something along with him looking like, if Adam Sandler had a brother with Down syndrome, like that was the first first thing I came up with her, her name to say. And he got, he's real sensitive. So he got his feelings hurt real bad. And then he starts talking about Matt's wife cheating on him, like some real personal stuff Matt didn't want out there. And then uh, he's like, well, you said this to that. And he's like, dude, that was McCorkle. That was not even me. You know, like he said, uh, he, st- he took the password to my Twitter and started doing it as if I stole it. Like Matt goes <laughs> me under the bus. He asked me to talk trash for him. And then so Shab starts trashing me in interviews. And I keep telling him, like, we can fight any time. I wasn't in the UFC anymore at the time, but I said, you know, we can fight anywhere you want because I, I would be, even if he was going to beat me, it'd be worth it just to punch him in the face once. Like, that's how bad I'd like to punch Brendan Shaw just once. But I highly doubt he would have beat me in a fight. You would have whooped his ass, bro. You I, got size yeah, on I, him. I mean, I can't see it. I, was, I would walk in at 295, man. So uh, to the fights, I was way bigger and stronger than people. Um, and uh, so, um, yeah, that starts with that, and he gets mad and starts saying stuff. So I started saying stuff back and forth with him, just going back and forth. But it all really started. I was out. Spike TV flew me out to do – they were going to do a Tosh.0 style show with a fighter and a comedian, and they were going to have them look at internet videos and make jokes. So just Tosh.0 – I mean, basically a ripoff, you know? So they got a pilot green-lighted to do it, and uh, I went out there. And so they had me audition with Adam first and Brian Callen second. Well, Callen walks in with Shab. As I'm auditioning, and I hear him say, "Oh, not this dude!" Like shot like that in the middle, it threw me off. Like during the middle of my auditions, I'm you know reading something to the camera. I looked up, I said, "You got something to say?" Like the shop, you know. And uh, he just looked the other way. I said, "Yeah, keep staring, like staring through gay little Gucci boots, you know, or whatever, fat, right. like uh, or something like, you know, said something to him." And then I just keep looking until so, like ruins the whole thing for me. So I keep thinking I want to punch him in the face, you know. So he ends up going in the other room because he's a pussy in real life, complete pussy. Um, like he walks in the other room and so then I'm talking to Callan for a minute. He's like, dude, you are really funny because I did, they gave me jokes to read and I, they were so bad. I didn't feel comfortable doing them. So I made my own jokes up, uh, and did them. And it kind of threw him off at first. He goes, well, where are you getting those jokes? Like the director guy said, I wrote them on the way out here on the plane. And he was like, wait, you wrote those like yourself. I said, yeah, it's not real. It's not real hard, man. And the long story short, I got hired to write all the jokes for the show and not even be on it, which is. Cause I told him I didn't want to fly to LA all the time and do the show. Like I didn't want to, you know, I don't, I don't like flying. I don't like LA. I never wanted to be famous. So they would said they paid me more to write the jokes than they would to be on the show or at least as much. So that's what we agreed to. And they did end up getting picked up. They had a pilot, but it didn't get picked up. Um, but that was right around when uh, Shab and Callan had did, started their podcast and he was real cocky um, for what little stuff he had. But ever since then, and then he's always saying stuff on Joe Rogan. Rog- will say I'm funny. And he's like, yes, he's still alive. It's always that I'm dead. Or that yeah. I'm an Uber driver, or you know, whatever. And then uh, Mitrione and um, what's his name, Josh Barnett, were on his fight companion, and intentionally, Josh Barnett brought up how funny I was just to yeah. piss Shab off. And Shab had no idea he was doing that; he didn't know that's what he was doing. But he did it intentionally to burn him up. So they were saying that on there. So uh, Shab, same thing. I, yeah, what is he? Just an Uber driver? Like you know, like it's just all <laughs> same hack to shit. Yeah, and so Barnett's he, another one of the funny, funny guys too. He he's is, pretty, man. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I love Josh Barnett. I actually told Josh Barnett, he sent me a message when I ver- before I ever met him in person. He sent me a message that said, if you ever want to train together, let me know. Also, I can help you with your after party in Seattle. And I thought he was just some guy named Josh Barnett because I never dreamed the Josh Barnett knew who I was. Like, I think this was before he was in the UFC or, or he hadn't been there very long. So I thought it was just some guy and his emoji was just like a little cartoon character. And he only had 200 friends. 
So I thought it was just a guy named Josh Barnett. I said, hey, man, I appreciate that. But I kind of like to train with my own team, you know, or whatever. And I used to have fans hit me up all the time. We should train together. And right. more like ask you on a date, you know, or whatever. Like, guys, we should hang out sometime. And so um, I said, no, nah, man, I'm good. I appreciate it. I like this and that. And he goes, well, I'm still happy at the after party. I said, I don't let my agent do that, man. But thanks. I appreciate all my fans. So Barnett hates my gut. And I don't know if it's actually Josh Barnett. And so um, my agent said, asked me one time, why does Josh Barnett hate you? And I was like, I've never even met him. I don't have any idea. And uh, he was like, uh, he's really mad at you. And I saw him at a final. I walked up to him. I said, why are you mad at me? He said, oh, because I'm one of your fans. I'm this and that. You didn't ever want to train. He's like, dude, I'm really good. Like, I'm really experienced all this stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell is he talking about? You know? So I finally said, Josh, I don't know why you're mad, but I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, I asked you on Facebook, you know, blah, blah, blah. He pulls up the message. And then I started dying laughing. I said, that was you? I feel like I didn't know that was actually Josh. I, got, I just didn't dream Josh Barnett would know who I was, you know, like at that point, you know, because I think I'd only fought once in the UFC or something. I just didn't think he was, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. I just didn't think he would know who I was. And uh, I guess he knew me from the underground more than anything, like posting on the forums. Um, but, yeah, that was, uh, we became friends after that. But he hated me for years, and I had no idea. I was and like, by so that time, that he hated me. By that time, he was already youngest uh, heavyweight champion, right? Uh, yeah, in he UFC was. History, yeah, he so. was in originally and then he went to pride forever he was over in yeah. Pride. then he was with affliction for a while till he got uh, i think they canceled his fight with fatal for steroids or thank god the ufc never test tested for steroids because i was on <laughs> everything they made when i was fighting man so yeah so let back on the shab uh thing so then you you started because you had some interaction with him and you you sussed it out from the beginning basically that uh shab there was something off with him and yeah, he was. He started growing, growing this fandom, and then eventually this collection of people came together. So, what, what what's your take on what what the the origins of PF Changs and all that stuff? Dude, it's amazing because the. I mean, if you realize, I I've heard. I don't know if it's true. They say twenty to thirty million people per episode watch Rogan's podcast. He has been on there, I think, three hundred plus times or two hundred plus times. So, holy shit! I know okay. guy like that Lex Friedman guy was on there twice, and now he has a podcast with two million followers. Like that's. If you can be on, if, if I can get on Joe Rogan's, I've never asked him or wanted to try to use him like Shab did. But if I was on there once or twice, I know I could have a successful podcast. You know, um, I got something to talk about on there other than how much I hate Shab. That probably wouldn't work. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, but I mean, you can get big enough. And it just goes to show now that uh, Rogan kind of distanced himself from Callan and from Shab. When Shab started getting all that hate, and then Callan got like 30 rape allegations in a row. You know, <laughs> like he started getting all that Rogan kind of distance. I mean, now hey, man, when he got a bust a nut. Yeah, he, he won't even uh, he won't let them perform at his new comedy club like either of them. Um, yeah. Because they're, you know, because shop sucks, number one. But right. I, don't think, I don't think Rogan can tell him he needs to quit another career after he told him to quit fighting. And he should do stand-up. What's he going to do now? Say, oh, you shouldn't do stand-up. You should be a... A roofer, you know, like what's he going to tell him at this point? You know, like uh, <laughs> yeah, right. he's a, he's a way better fighter than he was. Um, it does not say much, but his comedy sucks, man. Like it, he doesn't understand that what the fuck is not a punchline. Like you know what I mean or whatever. He'll be like, what's yeah. this stuff with? Have you guys seen this stuff with Michael Jackson? What the fuck? Like that's your punchline? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, that's, like, that's it. Like it's just everything. But uh, I can't. I, I don't think he'll ever do another special again. But dude, I waited like a kid up for Christmas morning for his first comedy special. Because I knew how bad it was going to be. And then I found myself, I always equate it to when I, I saw two midgets do an MMA fight one time. Yeah. And one of them was a tall midget comparatively, and one was a short, like fat or heavier <laughs> midget. And so yeah. maybe one was a tall drawer. I don't know what was going on. And it was hilarious until one got hurt. And then I just felt just absolutely like the worst person that ever lived. You know what I mean? I just thought, dude, this is terrible. Like I'm laughing at these guys out there hurting each other, They're already, you know, disabled enough. And now, actually hurting like actually hurting each other you know what i mean like yeah and that's how i felt I swear to god halfway through shop's comedy special i, I felt like this that. is just sad man i was like this is sad the outfit he was wearing and his jeans he, he's built like a. I always say he's got like a a woman like a, a woman who's had four kids body oh you know, like no he's, got, like he's real hip heavy it's just he's got a he always calls it thick he's just ill built you know what i mean like <laughs> that's not, disgusting yeah he's he's just a odd i mean i'm not in great shape by any means but he's a, he's like a upside down v-shape whatever that is i guess you know what i mean like he's a, <laughs> as a dude you want big shoulders and small waist he's got small shoulders and a big waist and just uh and really he's the most insecure person that ever lived so i do feel bad for him sometimes but then he does something like lies about being able to bench press 225 pounds 
50 right. times or something that's impossible. Like that, I ran a 4 1 in college 40. Like, no, you didn't, dude. You know how fast that is? You know what I mean? Like, right. that's faster than Bo Jackson. That's faster than Deion Sanders. Like, no, you didn't. You know, like, but his one about repping the 225. I don't know if you guys lift or know anything about the. I, no, I, 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 I used to in a, in a, in a public yeah, school. Yeah, I, 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 I like literally 10. bet him 500 grand. He cannot do 40 reps at 225. Told him, I will bet you, I will show proof of funds and bet you $500,000. Because I can run 35 miles an hour if he can bench press it 40 times. Like, I'm telling you, it ain't happening. There's no way. Like, uh, I asked Marius Pujanowski how many times he can still do it, and he said 46 to 48. And right. he was the world's six times world's strongest man and used to bench press 700 pounds, you know? Like right. 50. So he said, like, he could still do it, like, mid-40s now. There's no way, Sean. And I know uh, Mark Harvey said he maybe could do 28 to 30 half ass reps. But, I mean, that's like elite NFL strength if he could actually do that 42 times. But he just lies all the – yeah, I can rip it 42 times. You know, that's my shot, boys. Yeah, it's I think it's like – I think it's – I think he might have some tarred strength, but also he some completely exaggerates. Because you you remember the cup of coffee with the right. Buffalo Bills, B. It was like he didn't really play any professional football, No, obviously. he never went to training camp, never got drafted. Wait, he never. said he was doing training camp and shit, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He <laughs> every time. Yeah, I went to training camp, and I got—I was the last guy to get cut. Like every time, it just gets better and better. What he, I'll tell you what—if he really ran a four-three forty and could rep uh, two twenty-five forty-four times, they were crazy to not take him because those are better than anybody's. Like that's a better combination than anyone's ever had in the NFL. Ever, you know, yeah. He would have been Bo Jack. He would have been better than Bo Jackson yeah, for sure. Like he's, yeah. uh, he says, yeah, he used to run a four-four forty, and he he could rep forty-four to forty-six times on two twenty-five. I'm like Aaron Donald is widely considered maybe the strongest player in the NFL, and he repped at 36. So Shaw right. could outdo him another 10 reps. You know? And remember, uh, like, have you seen his highlights from the his time at the Buffs? It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. like kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, just him running down on a kickoff. It reminds me, sadly <laughs> reminds me of that, of that internet thing where they have the blind kid playing football. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, this uh, way, this yeah. way. He, like, yeah. runs past the guy and runs back. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what Scott looks like. He's just out there running in different directions. Like he's, uh, I've got a yeah. guy, this is sad. I don't want to name him or make fun of him, but I got a guy he's <laughs> to school with, and he's living through his son. His son plays football, and he's from the time he was 10 years old, his son, my son's going to be in the NFL like this and that. And so his son um, signed with one of the, I don't want to get too specific, but his son signed with the armed forces, one of the foreign forces to play football for them, which basically was just, We'll let you be on the team if you give us eight years of your life, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. as a, as a, not a kicker, but a long snapper, like something you only do one thing. Of. Like he's not a, yeah. player, just only a snapper. Like he only snaps it. And so his son, every game at the college, he's been in college for four years now, but he's still somehow a freshman. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, he's got like the Tommy boy or whatever. Chris Farley was that movie. Like you've been going to college for eight years and you're a sophomore. But he's a Van think, Wilder personnel. Yeah, I think he got redshirted. Plus, he got the COVID thing. Plus, yep. he transferred, so he got a year. I don't know what it was. So, um, but his son gets all dressed, gets black, the black stuff under his eyes uh, before every game. He's never Happy. been in a single play, like ever. Right. And then he got in one play this year. It's his junior year, his seventh year in college. His junior year, they had a kickoff, and it was a fair catch. But all his son did was run down the field. But I've seen that highlight over and over again on Facebook. He didn't even block anybody or get blocked. Like his son just ran. They did a fair catch on the kickoff. He was so short, and that was it. But he's just played that highlight over and over again every week on there. I'm like, man, that guy really likes his son's football career. And, uh, well, yeah, that I actually know a guy who went to Army in a similar thing, and he went as a punter, but then he yeah. ended, didn't end up really playing too much. But he still had to get like good grades and get like a governor yeah. to sign off on some shit to go there. But so it's all good. But uh, yeah, it was funny because he was like, I'm going to play football and. He wasn't – he was like the third-string punter or something. Yeah. The best yeah. was Lorenzo Fertitta's son, who was like 5'6", 165, and he got a full ride to Notre Dame. And Notre <laughs> Dame football was always a big deal to me because I'm from Indiana, and they're in South Bend, Indiana, which is north. So, like, it's, I was a huge Notre Dame fan. But he was, like, proving all the haters wrong, like, on uh, Twitter. <laughs> and I was like, well, what happened was I actually happened to be on the airplane with a lady one time. She said she worked for Notre Dame and their fundraising stuff. And I was like, oh, dude, I was, like, talking to her. I said, you know, my cousin tried to get in and go to college there. He had a perfect score on his SAT, and he couldn't even get – I couldn't even get accepted because they have, like, 30,000 applicants a year and only take 5,000. And uh, <laughs> I said uh, – I, I guess the Fertitta guy, uh, Fertitta's kid went there, huh, somehow. I said, I was surprised he didn't have any other Division One offers. And she goes, well, it helps when your dad gives a million dollars under the table to the football program. 
oh, and, yeah, you man. know, or whatever. So yeah, his dad gave a million dollars to Notre Dame and he got a Notre Dame scholarship uh, to play football there, which I don't know if he knows it or not, but I would find it odd if only Notre Dame was recruiting me in Northern Division One schools, you know, like that would be a, that would be a strange thing. But it's, right. uh, yeah, he's the like, crap. Yeah, I was going to prove all the haters wrong. I said, dude, all you did is prove that you're a future billionaire. Like, that's all you proved. You know? Sean, I, yeah. I, I, Sean, I got a question for you. Yeah. Going back to Brandon Schwab, <laughs> I've heard rumors that he's somewhat poor to some extent, right? That, and there's a loss of money because I saw some. St- well, he was betting on, I think it was some UFC or fight or something like that. And I forgot the gentleman who was a huge uh, lifter on YouTube. He has his own channel. Oh, yeah. The, what was uh, that? And then that's that. Bradley Martin. Bet, Bradley Martin, they bet like a few few thousands. And then you could see Brandon Schwab, you know, basically like, you know, regretting what he did and everything like uh, that. And he was, and he was like trying to forget like it even happened, the bet itself. Yeah. Guys, like, hey, man. For, I know he's famous for not paying his bets. I've heard that from several. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like we were just joking, dude. Come on, like, and yeah, you tell, like, dude, I'll tell you what, you can make a living just betting opposite whatever he says. There's somebody on Changs that's keeping a running total of <laughs> betting against Schaub's predictions, and they're winning like 75% of the time. It's crazy, right? Like, it's absolutely crazy, but yeah, no, he never. I know I couldn't believe how much he was making. I guess if you can do 300,000 views or 400,000 views a week, you can make a living like a really good living on YouTube. I didn't know that, like, for whatever reason, I just I didn't know that, but somebody's telling me how much they can make. But I know, you know, he was, he's the one thing I will give Schaub credit for is he knows how to ride coattails, man. Like he jumped on Theo Vaughn's coattails. I've met Theo a couple of times. He's just like he is like on, you know, uh, on TV or on his, uh, like his podcast. So I've got to hang out with him a couple of times, but Schaub jumped on him early. He tried to jump on anybody he sees that's coming up, like a comedian that may go somewhere. He jumps on their coattails and tries to do a podcast with them. And he was Jelly happy. Roll. Yeah, he's yeah, he's trying to do that. Anybody he tries to jump because he knows he doesn't have any uh like when Theo Vaughn left the King and the Sting or whatever that was, th- there went ninety percent of his views. Nobody watches it anymore. But I know uh, even him and Calvin, their podcast, I wanna say only because it's still not bad, but they're only doing like forty thousand views a an episode. They used to do two to three hundred thousand, you know. So they've gone down by eighty or ninety percent and he got stuck for a million and a half dollars, I guess, from that, whatever that podcast the cast was. media. Yeah. That yeah. the bottom fell out of a lot of the podcasting yeah. stuff with the cast media. Yeah. yeah so, so I don't know how he's paying. They always say his dad's rich. I don't know how he's paying his bills, but you can't pay to have a, I mean, I'm sure you guys are doing podcasts. You can't have a producer, a sound guy, an editor, a guy that only does your social media, like nine employees on 40,000 views a week. Like, I don't know how he's, yeah. I don't know how he's paying for it, but it, maybe uh, I don't know. Chin, some chin, chin, bro. Chin probably gets paid in like ramen noodles or something, bro. <laughs> he must, yeah. That guy's something else, man. That chin guy is he's too good to be true, man. He's his he's always posting his own videos now, like, yeah, this is me cooking spaghetti. Like he's always got stuff <laughs> going on. Like, like, he, he's, insane, bro. he's like getting collateral damage from Shab. Like it's crazy, man. Like anybody's associated with him. So So let's talk about Changs for a sec. So we all kind of uh all, everyone kind of started aw- having this awakening with Shab and started amalgamating at Reddit. And it was called the Fighter and the Kid subreddit, a.k.a. P.F. Changs from the famous uh, Brendan Shab rant where he said, um, uh, and the homeless cats, the homeless cats rant. And he was talking about <laughs> disrespecting a P.F. Changs waiter and he would never go back to doing that and shit. So yeah you 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 got on there and started making waves with your wit and humor and then since you were also someone who kind of knew him and what do you what do you think of it and how what are your feelings of how it's grown to be such like its own industry now it's dude the crazy thing i don't know if you guys even know what the underground is or mma.tv or mitchmarshallers.com yeah it was very similar to the underground was very similar that years ago i quit going on there (laughs) after i lost my first fight ufc or my first time i lost ufc and everybody was like that's why you got knocked out by Struve, bitch. Like everybody, because I was like the most famous poster on there before I was in the UFC. Like, because I was, that's how I got in the UFC was basically talking, getting, you know, popular online with the shit post MMA community. That's how I got a shot. So um, I, um, I always thought I was like Kimbo Slice, but with talking trash on the internet instead of street fighting, you know. But um, I, my uh, fiance was the one who told me about it. She goes, you know, there's a whole Reddit page about Shab, right? She kept telling me that. She goes, it's amazing. And she just knows him peripherally from me saying I can't stand him. And so she would send me stuff here and there, and I didn't really know how Reddit worked or what it was. I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. Like Pinterest, I still don't know what that is. Like I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm behind on the times. Like I just hear the. I hear those terms, but I don't know what they are. So right. I got on there, and um, I told somebody. Ironically, I felt like I had a home for the first time, and I was a homeless cat. <laughs> but I was like these because it every way the way he pronounced stuff irritated me. The way he did everything about him is annoying. 
Like everything he does is so annoying, man. And um, and everybody started like I was like, dude, these guys get it. They all see the same thing. Like I'm not alone. And then they right, got to where, one big like, happy family. Yeah, yeah, one psychotic <laughs> family. And, uh, they they went off on me though. They actually made me mad. I literally told them. I do stuff for a homeless shelter, ironically, here in Indianapolis or when I used to live in Indianapolis. I would always help out with homeless shelters. I, I just feel bad for homeless people, man. Like, yeah. some people feel bad for animals, you know, and stuff. I just I always feel bad because a lot of them are just mentally ill, man. It's not just – they're not just all drug addicts and alcoholics. Like, a lot of them really have mental health problems. And growing up, my dad always – like, they, my parents gave a lot of money to charities and stuff, and especially the homeless one that downtown has the one where they, they house guys, try to give them jobs, you know, in Indianapolis. They do a lot of stuff, so – they're always asking me for money every Christmas time or every, you know, every day, basically, they got a new thing. They want to ask me for money. I think they got like, they think I'm loaded or something. I'm like, dude, I can only do so much for you, you know? But um, I thought, wouldn't it be ironic if we did something for the homeless shelter on PF change, you know? So I put on there, I said, Hey, I know this has been tried before and you guys will probably not like it, but I have this homeless shelter hitting me up. If you guys want, I'll give a $250 award to whoever comes up with the best chain t-shirt chain theme t-shirt whatever it is you know like what are we doing here or whatever just whatever i'm sure they come up with something genius right i said then um i've got a nephew who prints his own t-shirts because he's got a business long story but um he's actually making more money than me my 18 year old nephew it's crazy like he's getting paid he, doing he's plugged in bro <laughs> dude it's crazy he, he started filming future pro athletes at their high school games like AU games and then yeah. putting it online and has just gotten to where i mean it's like he's was filming with Shaq the other day. I'm like, how did you get to film an interview with Shaq? You're 19 years old. Like he just, he really works at it, man. But um, he started printing his own t-shirts and got a t-shirt press um, set up. And I said, how much could you do shirts for? And he's like, $9 that would be cost with something printed front and back, blah, blah, blah. So I, I said on chains, if you guys want to do a $10 t-shirt, I'll give a dollar of whatever we make off every shirt because it's going to cost nine to this homeless shelter. And then we can actually do something good. Dude, you'd have thought I was like Ty Lopez or one of these Gary V or something like, Oh yeah. Trying to monetize the site, you know, or whatever. It's yeah. Of shit like you, but they do, they lost their minds like a thousand people. And I was like, dude, I said, if you guys don't like this idea, I'm cool with it. I will literally right. provide you receipts that I gave a dollar per shirt. And how much can I be making on a $10 shirt, you know, or whatever, like, you know, and, and there's like, yeah, you just trying to, you're trying to monetize like everybody else. Everybody wants to get rich off this site. <laughs> I don't think anybody's getting rich off the site. You know, like they're all, so they, I mean, they went on for weeks about it. Dude. Like they lost right. their mind. I was like, dude, oh, okay. I won't do any shirts. Like, I, like I just proposed dude, it. I well, didn't print one. Like it's just, some of them guys are really unhappy with their lives. Some of them are hilarious. Like, <laughs> some of them are, they're looking for anybody vicious. The one that hurt the most, they were like, you're worse than Shab. I was like, dude, don't <laughs> like, please don't well, put us in the same sentence, let alone I'm worse than him. You know? People right. got really mad about that guy who uh, created the YouTube page, the Tfat K Reddit page or the YouTube page. Yeah, and was doing those short videos. Right, he's a fool. Jimmer Nam, the former Stern guy, uh, he uh, started monetizing the channel, and he was stealing people's jokes. And then, oh, it, is that what it is? Yeah, so it exploded from that, and they wanted to make it like all pure. And so that was like maybe a year or two ago when that really blew up, and. They actually, we were trying to get uh, Sorgon Bird on, the guy who wrote Trugwog. You know that guy? Yeah, I saw, I saw a guy who says he wrote it, some crazy white yeah, guy yeah, yeah. in a video or whatever. But I, I never watched that interview, but I heard everybody hate on him saying he was the worst or whatever. Um, but they kept saying he jumped a shark and stuff like that, whatever that means. I don't know. They were just going off on him. But um, that song was amazing, dude. That was like, dude, I, yeah. I, some of the people, there's a video on there right now. I don't know who made it. God, I, I knew the name. But there's a video, it's only got like 30,000 views. It is like the most beautiful piece of artwork I've ever seen. Like, it is like the funniest shop video. The whole time he's got a narrator in the background, and it's just like pictures of like a flower blooming real fast, and then Shab like saying, telling a terrible joke, and it goes to a nuclear explosion. And the whole time, <laughs> this guy in the background's like, You didn't know you were redacted until you did, this. but it sounds like a presidential speech. It's like the greatest. I actually right. quit making my shop video. I was making a video about Shab. And I quit making it when I saw how great that one was. I was like, dude, I don't even want to, like, I don't even, I was making a video called The Intervention of Brandon Shop, and the whole plan was to get him to stop stand up. And I'll be damned if he doesn't stop stand up before I get a chance to finish the video. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So it was like, but I was like, um, I was putting clips of Dr. Phil of the show intervention. I had like what I thought was a great video coming together uh, doing it. But when I, uh, yeah, like when he quit doing stand up, I was like, it's going to, 
everybody's just going to be like, oh, you just did that because you knew he's going to quit. So I'd be like, if I'd have made it one month early, it'd been great because I could have taken credit for him stopping. But um, he can't sell tickets for shit. I know the one here in the club in Indianapolis said they had like not even one ticket sold. So then he canceled when he's supposed to be coming here. He always says it's for some COVID reason or some. My son's yeah. got a baseball game. It's always something, but it's he can't sell a single ticket. Anyway. Why did he even go towards comedy, honestly? Like, I, I never uh, really learned why Brandon Schaub even actually, because he was friends with comedians. Like, oh, I can do I this. I guess, yeah, because, you know, the I'm sure you guys seen the video where basically Rogan told him to quit fighting. He sucks at fighting, which devastated <laughs> yeah. him, you know. And then he was trying to get him to do, he was so scared he was going to get, like, uh, brain dead. I said he could be even worse than he was, but he was so scared he was going to have brain damage that he kept trying to push him to anything. And it's like if Joe Rogan always said if Rogan was a car deal, like if he owned a car dealership, then Shab would be selling cars right now. If Joe Rogan owned <laughs> a restaurant, he would have a restaurant right now. Right. You know, like he was just trying that to greasy like, Italian you know, guy trying to sell you something. Yeah, like if uh, if he just anything that Rogan could give him an end to, then he did it. So Shab started, you know, doing his stand up comedy, um, and just he got just the street cred, I guess, from being on Joe Rogan all the time. Uh, but like I said, man, you could put anybody on there when your show is big as Howard Stern or Joe Rogan. Anybody that's on there seven or eight times because it's going to have their own platform, you know, right. whether they suck or not, you know, um, you know, they're going to have their own thing. So, um, yeah, that's what he did. But that's what I he, he DMs me all the time on Twitter from a fake account and acts like it's not him. But he's always like, I think you guys should team up. Like, it's always like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you're just some random guy trying to, you know, like uh, make me job get along, you know, but he's constantly DMing me and I'll say stuff to him like you'll never perform at the mothership ever. And he'll just say back, it'll happen. So I know it's actually shot. No, you guys like, talk shit back and forth about the mothership, bro. Yeah, I was talking to him <laughs> there. I'm like, you'll never get your chance. He's I getting, love that. He got a Texas tattoo. He keeps saying, yeah, I've always wanted to move to Texas. He's dying for Rogan to invite him to move to Texas because Rogan told Joey Diaz he would buy him a house or build him a house there if he yeah. would uh, move there. And Shab's like, you know, I'd move to Texas if you wanted. You know, and then I guarantee you, Rogan, I heard through a pretty reliable source I've got a guy on the inside there um, that they don't know about, but I heard through a really reliable source that um, Joe Rogan told Chubb he needed to stay in LA and hold down the fort, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, or whatever, at the comedy store. Like, we need you to hold down the fort because he's, you know, like stalking him 24 hours a day. So that's what I heard anyway. So I heard through uh, the vines, or the saying is that you were <laughs> somewhat of a comedian at some point. You did like, you dabble I, yeah i did an open mic one night and half the crowd what pushed you towards that man like what kind of brought you into that realm oh uh, gosh i was from knowing adam when i first time i ever hung out with adam he kept saying dude you're funnier than 90 percent of me you should do stand up and i was like i don't want to like i just don't want to travel all the time man and i'm like how much money do you make starting off because i'm not into i don't want to i don't want to bomb for five years for free you know i'm just i don't i, I just never had the i didn't want to be famous i guess i, I don't really Right. I don't like being, my least part, favorite part about fighting was being in front of people. Like if I had my choice, I'd rather fight in an empty arena. I don't like being the center of attention. Some people do. I just don't like it. Like I, I always was uncomfortable with it. And so. Um, it's because you don't have emotional distress or problems. And I guess. Yeah. Well, you. I really have those. Just not the wrong. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right. I did opiate withdrawals for uh, eight weeks here recently after uh, having back surgery that finally fixed my back. Hmm. And I was taking enough Percocet to kill a person, like to kill a horse. Every day I, for 12 years, I've been having back surgeries and traveled the world, went to Germany twice, the Kobe Bryant's doctor. I mean, dude, spent a fortune trying to fix my back. Finally got a procedure that reduced the pain about 50%. And now that it's, it's still excruciating, but the fact that it's reduced 50%, I always said, I won't take any pain medicine if I can get it to where I can walk, but I can't just lay in bed all day, every day, man. I got right. to gotta gotta live my life, you know? So I had yeah. to take it forever, man. I mean, just forever. And, uh, yeah, I was out of control there for a while. Man, I, I smacked a dude on a motorcycle like two months ago, knocked him out like uh, just for flipping me off. I just wasn't in the mood. He flipped me off. I got. I wasn't in the mood. Yeah, I just was in a bad mood. And he flipped me off as he went by because he wanted to pass me. And I let him pass. Like, I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? Let him pass. Right. And he flipped me off. And then we got up to where a uh, 10 minutes later, he thought I had forgotten, I guess. And we get to a stoplight and it stops. And I get off the out of my car, start walking up. And then he tries me. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't flip you off. And that just really made me mad. So yeah. I just smacked the shit out of him. And when I hit him, his uh, motorcycle helmet turned sideways on his face, oh, but it no, stayed no. on. And then he was like, he was loopy from getting hit. And so then he falls off backward with it on sideways. And I start cracking up. I start dying <laughs> laughing because I just didn't expect that to happen. Even though I was mad, like it just looked like something out of a cartoon, you know? Right. 
And then as I was walking back to my car, someone blows their horn at me, but I had just dropped my gun. It was I had a gun in my No, you don't, band. bro. Yeah, and so my gun had just fallen out of my waistband. And I picked it up, and the guy beats his horn. I look at him, and he sees I've got a gun, and he takes off. Because I was like, dude, I'm, not, I'm, like, oh, I'm not shooting yet. Like, I just, I'm not going to shoot yet. Gun. Yeah, yeah, unless you beat your horn again. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it just uh, – I was, dude, it, you go through withdrawals. I don't – most people would, like, be ashamed of that. Dude, I, I say to this day, I don't regret taking the pain pills. I didn't have a choice, man. It hurt yeah. so bad. I would go to doctors. I would tell them I would kill myself if I didn't have kids. Like, literally. Like, that's how bad my back hurts. It was excruciating. I mean, like, just, you want to go to the ER every night, you know? So I had to take them for 12 years, and I and they stopped working. Like, you start with one Percocet every six hours. You need two a month in because it doesn't, stops working. And then before long, you need three, four, and it just gets more and more ridiculous, you know? Um, but um, I tell people, I really do tell people I regret having to take them, but I really didn't have a choice, man. And I don't smoke weed. I don't drink. I don't do anything. So it isn't like I've ever had addiction problems. Right. Um, but as soon as my back got even 20% better, I was able to stop taking everything. But I went through eight weeks of hell because I just went cold turkey on everything. I just like That's respect, just stopped man. taking them, which is real dangerous apparently, but uh, yeah, especially for motorcycle drivers. But uh, yeah, yeah it, uh, I was in a really, really, I mean, that's not the only person I assaulted during that uh, time. <laughs> That's the only one I've publicly talked about. There's a few right. that are still in there's mitigation. A, there's a few but, others as long as we keep yeah. on the ride. Who haven't shown but, up uh, yet, you know. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was waiting for the cops to come get me for about two weeks at one point. They apparently didn't catch me though on a different thing. So, yeah, it was uh, – I just was not in the mood, man, for a while. But I'm back decent again, I guess. Hey, as long as you don't slap me through the screen, that's all that I have. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I, was, I was mad enough during that time. I was trying to – I was like literally pay, paying – one of those people finder things that would give me people's addresses. So somebody would talk trash online, you know, whatever. And... Oh shoot. Did he mute? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I think you might've muted, bro. Hey, you might've muted. Sean, you might've muted. Sean, can you hear us? Sean. <laughs> Maybe he's, uh, I don't know if he's actually muted. Yo, yeah, McCorko, your audio is not working. Yeah, your audio is not working right now. Take a look at your phone. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Holy so. shit, this is the best part. Let me remove him, Adam, back in. Let me yeah. See. Hello, hello. Yeah, but in, anyway. Uh, Damn, that was really for good. For anyone who's just tuning in, man, we got big, sexy Sean McCorkle. All right, how about now? There he is. Yeah, perfect. Good, good, yeah. Yeah, oh, my just phone, reset. It loves to switch to my headphones on its own all day. Yeah, so. that's probably what it was. So good, man. So you you got off that, and that's the thing with uh, um, pain opiates or pain medication. It's like it's one of the worst things to try to get off, but it's not as like alcohol and uh, benzos are the ones where you can actually have GABA imbalance and die from it. But yeah. the pain, but the opiate one is like so intense. Your like skin like is. They say like it's like coming your skin's like you want to jump out of your body. Basically. Dude, it's that's the best way to describe it. I actually I told somebody the best thing I've ever seen that showed it is when I don't know if you watch that show Black Mirror, but there was an episode where a girl turned in. They so you thought in the show she was turned into uh, or she's having with withdrawals. That's what they led you to believe, but she was actually turned into a werewolf. So I guess that ruined that episode for anybody that watches the show. Um, <laughs> but um that was like and you thought she was having, but withdrawals is dude, and I'm not a baby, I'm not a wimp. That is the Worst thing I've ever experienced physically in my life, man. It is, especially at those amounts, and just stopping cold turkey. Like you said, alcohol and benzos, you can die if you go off of them, literally. But uh, opiates, it's just the sickest you've ever been, but that doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, it is just right. complete discomfort. You can't sleep. You feel like your skin is crawling. It just is, it's, it's unbearable, man. And I did it for eight weeks straight. If I would have known at the beginning of eight weeks, I never would have made it. I would have been like, I can't do this. But I kept thinking, today's got to be the last day. You know what I mean? Like, it's got to right. be after three or four days. Because I'd had to do it before. They, When you're on pain management through a doctor, they love to write scripts. And then they won't let you fill it till the 31st day. And then they don't have it in stock. And they're like, well, sorry. And you're like, oh, you'll have to wait till Monday. I'm like, well, it's Thursday and I'm out. And so that's four days, you know. Well, don't know what to tell you. Uh, and then, or you need a prior authorization from your insurance. Sorry, it's going to be a week, you know. And every month it's something. So I've done withdrawals like 20 times, but never anything like this last time, man, when I just went. I tried to taper off, and I was like, dude, I would rather be on a real uncomfortable for five days than 50% uncomfortable for, you know, a month. Turns out I was just really uncomfortable for two months. So it, now, was, it was bad. 
one of the bright spots in that time when you were probably withdrawing was seeing uh, the trug flip. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that was what turned it. That what gave me a, the will to go on. Uh, just yeah, him, that's, uh, yeah. It's I know he that dude. They a lot of people are saying that wasn't even him. It, like the video they showed driving wasn't him, and that the roll was actually really slow, and that like somebody stabilized on chains. Some chain guys are unreal. If they put their talent <laughs> towards something constructive, there's no telling what could happen. Like helping a homeless shelter with T-shirts, but. That's respect right there, though. They should, you know what? Did you like at least clap back a little bit at them for helping homeless well, shelter? At least there was a thousand on one. Like there's nothing you can do. <laughs> like, no. like, somebody said something. Oh yeah, you're so this and that. I was like, you're such a loser. You use a fake profile picture, a fake name, a fake everything, and you still don't have any good ideas. You know what I mean? Like, and but then it's everybody when there's when it's a thousand on one, nothing you say works. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, they all just right. Um, but they're like, oh, have it. and then I wonder like like post a picture of my bank account or something like, and then they're like, oh, I'm hear about, I'm like, oh, yeah, I really need your t-shirt sales to pay my bills, you know, but uh, that actually used to be my whole gimmick on the underground days. I would just say I was way richer than I was. I was like the real life. <laughs> like I would just say I was way richer than I was. And I would always like just everything. I would post a car, a picture of me standing next to a Rolls Royce and act like it was mine. Right. Just, I like, respect that, the, man. That's the hustle. Like, yeah, everything just is annoying. I used to do. I used to do everything shop pretends to be. I used to say I could run a four two forty, and right. um, then I put a video of myself running. Obviously, not a four two forty, and then claim that it was a four two. You know, <laughs> yeah. And then, like I would just do, and people they would get mad enough. Like I had people threatened to kill me. Like really threatened to kill me. Like they would get so mad they'd be like, "Dude, that's obviously only thirty yards." And I'd be like, "That was forty. Like count the lines." But that's I was forty, bitch. Yeah, you could tell it wasn't forty. You know what I mean? Like, but I would still. I stuck to the character constantly, but that's when, uh, that's what somebody asked me. They said, you, what if Shab was just a trolling genius and all this is just to get a fan base? Like if I were him, I would lean into it, man. I would right. get on chains and I would just rub it in even further, like all of it, you know? Um, but he, uh, he's such a sensitive bitch that he can't, he can't take any criticism at all. You know, it is incredible how it has, uh, perpetuated for so long. And there's always yeah. new shit that he's been doing that like, Right when you think, okay, now he's not doing stand up anymore. His podcasts are falling apart. His life's in shambles. But somehow there's still new shit that he's doing. That he, he really is the gift that keeps giving. Like he just comes up with something new all the time. Like it's just always like when he rescued the fat kid from the car wreck, allegedly. And then he had to say he was fat. Like I was like, dude, you couldn't just leave it alone. And then come to find out, I also uncovered that the girl who allegedly witnessed him do it happens to be friends with me on Facebook and with him and seven other UFC fighters. So oh, she's nice. just a UFC fan who wanted to give him an alibi. Like, oh, I thought I pulled by because I was like, that's weird. I would be friends with her on Facebook. That's strange. Right. The girl that like confirmed it. And then I hit who our, our uh, common friends were or whatever, our mutual friends, and it was all UFC people. And I'm like, there is no chance that girl drove by in L.A. at that time as he's pulling a kid from a car, see Shab, is friends with him on Facebook and then post that, oh, no, it really happened because everybody was like, dude, that story's bullshit. He probably just drove by an accident and because that's what he does. He, he adds way more onto the story than it actually was on everything, you know? Like, it's, uh, yeah. Schwab's a great man. What can we say? Well, no. <laughs> well I, I'm the, we've had um, uh, Mark Harley, Big Gay Lion, on a couple times. Like, uh, once right when he uh, kind of left and then we had him on a few months ago covering that – I After thought you were match. going to talk about the fat kid uh, that he brought out from like uh, Chicago or from Illinois. Remember that <laughs> and kid? Fire. The kid that he fired, but he had his lawyer do it. I guess like he was like, uh, "Listen, we can't have you on. We can't afford it. Sorry, we're going to hire a female twenty-one-year-old intern instead." You know. Yeah. So the Addies and Baddies Wrangler's been on Mir Musk a couple of times. What are your thoughts on that, uh, Mark Harley, dude? I was actually going to beat his ass originally. <laughs> he was saying something. He was saying stuff on chains. And he said something to me, and I was like, "Dude, I'm not one of these dudes on here hiding behind something. Like, I'll come out and smack the shit out of you, you know." And especially if you're on a motorcycle and I'm withdrawing. But um, it, uh, I had told him on there, and then he did the same thing. He asked Shab. He's like, "He has this thing. I'll come out and smack me." And Shab, I guess, told him, "Dude, he really will. Like, I would be like, I would. Like, I'm not. Com I'm not completely crazy, but like, I I can be moody, and so like." I don't, you just don't want to catch me on the wrong day. You know what I mean? Like catch me on the wrong nice guy ever until I'm not, you know? Um, but I told, I actually DM'd Harley. I said, dude, I'm going to come to LA and I'm going to smack the shit out of you. I'm coming to the Thick Boy Studio and smack the shit out of you. Because he was running his mouth on there. And he's like, dude, it doesn't have to be like this, you know? And then I was making fun of him until when he went, 
full retard against Shaw, then I was like, I guess the enemy <laughs> of my enemy is my friend. I don't know. You know what I, mean? I, mean, like, right. I, uh, I liked so much what he was doing to Shaw, and then he started messing me, saying, hey, sorry about all that, man. Like, yeah. I was just, you know, and I was like, oh, it's all good, man. Like I said, you made up for it with uh, – with you posting like you know the all the dms with the baddies you know or whatever <laughs> yeah. um, but he told me shop legitimately owes him 15 grand it won't pay him and he's, yeah. he's getting it no matter what he's getting the 15 grand you know um and but he's a like treasure, treasure trove of of shop inside uh dirt man like he's got he knows everything about that dude you know like he's yeah. got all the inside info so. he was telling us something like like, like brandon schwab talking about like dicks or something like that his dick size he wanted to know really bad i forgot some weird no shit. it was the uh so Brendan Schaub, like what he would do is he would like to, one of his stand up jokes when they go on the road together is he'd like be like, yeah, Mark sends me his dick pic all the time. And like he but it's just a made up story. Like none right. of this stuff has ever happened. But it's like for him to like try to get chicks. I don't know. He, it, he told the whole Weird. story. It's just like Schaub would do. Like it's made right. up story to kind of belittle <laughs> him in front of everyone. Um, right. So. But yeah, every, every chick loves that when you try to belittle your friend in front of them. That's a, he does everything wrong. Like Shop does everything the wrong way, man. Like just everything, and he can't he can't do a good deed without bragging about it. You know what I mean, or whatever. Like yeah, I heard uh, this guy, his son is sick. You know, I paid for the surgery. You know, like he just throws it out yeah. there. Like you, you don't uh, you don't have to. Uh, that's what guys crack me up on Facebook. I got a, this one dude I'm friends with or used to be friends with. Um, but dude, he, he cannot congratulate himself enough on how much good he does every day. Like saw a homeless guy today. I just went ahead and gave him my sandwich. You know, I figured I'd skip lunch, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, you're so sweet!" Like, dude, if you were really sweet, you wouldn't even bring it up. You know what I mean? And let alone, and no, you didn't skip lunch that day. You know what I mean? Like, you, <laughs> you went and got yourself something. Are you so cheap? You had to give him your lunch you brought from home. You couldn't even go buy him something. You know? Right, uh, right. But it's he, that dude is always congratulating himself. You know, like nonstop on what he. Uh, what he's done for people. But Shab's the same way. His wife is too good to be true too, man. Those two together. Like she's always yeah. selling her, her designer. Yeah. She's always trying to sell her designer <laughs> stuff for a quarter of what they paid for it. And then act like right. it's a business. She's like, I've made thirty five hundred dollars this month. I said, but it's like you sold thirteen thousand dollars worth of shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. If it's legit, the B- Balenciaga you know? and the Gucci bags and all that. Right, shit. yeah, but she yeah. sold for five hundred, but he paid five thousand. But I don't know. I've heard they're not married. I don't know if that's true. I've heard they're not actually married. So I don't know. I don't know. That makes sense. I, I, I've I seen that shit too. And I mean, I don't want to just focus too much on him because, uh, because I just hope he keeps, yeah, like you said, he's a gift that just keeps giving. And I, I, I hope for 10 more years of, uh, shop folly because I think it's hilarious, you know, all the (laughs) shit he does, but, uh, let's get in back to you for a sec. Cause, uh, I noticed that you, we were, we've been trying to set up this interview for a while and we were going back and forth. And you, you mentioned something in our DMS about, uh, uh, one of your pups or your, uh, your dogs, uh, going into labor and having some issues with it. Oh, but God, I, yeah. then I, I did some more research. You can get into that story if you want, but you, you're basically, you're breeding, uh, some high end dogs now, right? Yeah. I had a, I'll make it a super quick version. Cause that's the other thing. I'm a puppy mill operator now on chains. I'm like, okay, you do one litter a year, but. <laughs> When I had the meth head I almost shot, I wanted to get a good guard dog, and I always raised pit bulls. So I started looking on for, like, I was like, I'd like to have, like, what, like a really high-quality dog, like a really, you know, like, I don't know, like, show-quality pit bull if I'm going to get one. And um, I find this lady that has the most unbelievable dogs I've ever seen. Just, I mean, 130-pound monsters, just like, you know, genetic freak, you know, muscles and all that. And so I asked her how much first pick from one litter would be coming up, and she was, like, 13 to 18. And I said, okay, I'll take the first pick. And the more I'm talking to her, I realize she means thousand. I thought she meant hundred. And so I'm like, wait a minute, you sell dogs for eighteen thousand dollars? And she was like, all day long. I said, oh, it's like that can't be right. She goes, you don't know about XL American bullies. I said, they just look like big pit bulls to me. And she's like, well, exactly. But apparently, there's a. It was a huge world that I didn't know about. You know what I mean? That it's kind of like, it's like when you find out a skateboarder makes thirty million dollars a year. You're like, wait a minute, like they pay that for skateboarding? You know what I mean? Like I don't yes. you know that. So um, I got talking to the lady and her dogs were so amazing. I was like, why I can't spend $18,000 on one, you know? And she goes, well, you know, if you got like a male and a female for me uh, that weren't related, if you bred them, you should be able to sell the pups for $5,000 a piece. So you get your money back first litter, even if you only did one litter. And I wanted to have two dogs because I don't want one to be alone. Like I like to have, you know, I was like, I want to get a male and a female anyway. So I thought about it. I thought, man, if I could even sell them for $2,000 a piece, the pups, I would at least get my money back and then I don't have to breed them, you know, or whatever. So I figured I'll do that and get one litter. So the more I got into it, the more I just got interested in, I've always loved dogs and, you know, always had them. 
but I started like getting into it and I thought like, uh, you know, I might do one litter a year, but I want some really, really high end dogs. So, um, I paid 10,000 for a female and I have a male now, the litter I have now, the male originally was sold for $20,000, uh, from like the most famous kennel in the world. And a guy was getting out of, it's a long story, but he was getting out of that business and he was trying to place his dog. So I bought that one from him and we do a litter. And of course, nothing can ever go right. Like ever, you know what I mean? Um, she, my dog ends up going in labor 24 hours after having nine pups. Two of those nine die because they had developmental oh. problems. She goes into litter again, goes to the vet, which is a fortune for an emergency vet. They absolutely rob. You go to the emergency room for you cheaper than you go to a vet. Yeah. Uh, especially when they see an American bully. Cause like, Oh, you must have money if you have dogs. It's expensive. Yeah. So they rob you there. They, they end up taking two more dead puppies out of her. I end up with seven uh, pups and I hate to sound heartless, but, it's like none of them end up the Merle color, which is what makes them worth. Only two of the seven ended up the color that makes them worth 10 times more. It should have been at least 50%, but it's not because it's me. Um, <laughs> you know, um, so it just can't work out. And then I've had trouble. I can't give the last four away. Like, I don't know. Everybody's so broke right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Yeah. Bro, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm on pennies right now, man. I'm running it, on it pennies. It makes me nervous because the last time it was like this in 2008, I was a millionaire. And by 2009, I was bankrupt. Uh, everybody was everybody went broke in 2008 and um and i remember i had like real estate at the time i got divorced too which obviously didn't help but um right it may right now every i'm not broke yet but everybody i know is like everybody is broke and i'm like dude this makes me really nervous because that like the last time this happened i was broke a year later you know and so it's like nobody i mean i don't know if you guys have been grocery shopping lately but it's yeah, just like 100 to 200 dollars bro to feed just me and my girl and our, my baby yeah, and shit. I'm, yeah, it's a, I mean, I actually stopped eating steak. I know it's first world problems, but I was like, dude, I'm not buying filet anymore. At 38 bucks a pound, they can have it, you know? Um, it's crazy, or whatever. Bro. It's like, it is just, uh, it, and my, my electric bills three times what it was last year. They've raised the price literally 300% on the electric bill, you yeah. know, or whatever. And I'm like, how am I paying $700 for two people for an electric bill? You know what I mean? Or whatever. That's like crazy. And, um, it, it's just everything is outrageous. Like what, uh, Carvana buys all the cars up now. So if you go to buy a car, you have to basically buy it if you're getting to use one from them because they have everything. Um, so you got to go to Facebook are, Marketplace, man. And yeah, that's the, yeah, that's, I've been selling, um, I put it in my old GI Joe aircraft carrier. I don't know if you guys, you guys are probably aren't old enough to remember that, but no, sir. that was the, that was the thing back in the day, but I found a bunch of old parts for it. And I just put those on eBay last night. I'll see what it goes for. It could be in the thousands because that, so that collector stuff actually right. probably would have been in the thousands back in the day, but now, everybody's ever so broke <laughs> yeah dude i went i bought i had a i sold my house and the housing market was out of control yeah so i sold my house for way more uh than i owed on it like way way more when i bought this one and i was like you know what i'm gonna put fifty thousand dollars into something other than just the bank and i was gonna go silver gold or bitcoin i was like i could do any one of the three and i thought silver probably has the highest upside bitcoin i think they're gonna outlaw at some point I just think it'll be illegal and everybody will lose their money. I think government will. And I was like, gold is always going to be worth more, but gold has kind of been flat. So I buy silver. Of course, gold goes through the roof. Bitcoin, I would have made hundreds of thousands of dollars. It, like, I think it was that, I don't remember when I did it, uh, but I think it was that something like 5,000 of Bitcoin at the time. Right. Right? So I would have had 10 of them, which would be what? 600,000, 800,000 now? Yeah, so I could exactly. have bought that. I could have bought gold and made 50% of my money or 50%. I'm on silver. I just now am even after four or five years, you know what I mean? Or whatever. It's just like, sure. I bought it at its peak, you know? And I was just like, but everything I do, man, I always say I pitched wrong on a, uh, on roulette, red or black one time, 17 times in a row. Oh. I picked the wrong color. I left it on black 11 times in a row. It was wrong 11 times in a row. So I moved it to red and did another six red wrongs on red, you know? So if, I, uh, if, if you want it to fail, just have me get in on it. So. I got an idea for how you can move one of those puppies. Tell uh, tell Shab that it's like fifty thousand dollars and it's trained by like the uh, <laughs> the special forces in Angola or something, and he'll he'll Angola. he'll scoop it up he right away. He probably could, and he'll you know his one dog tank disappeared. I don't know if you guys have seen that. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. I'm he had a real not. high end cane corso like dog, and then he said he said that the breeder wanted it back because it was just too good a quality. But I think it's at the Humane <laughs> Society. What happened? I think he probably bit his kid or his girlfriend. But he's yeah. like, Yeah, the breeder called me up and said, Listen, it's just too good a quality. I need it back. So I that does back. not happen. Never. No. That, <laughs> you're not he was bragging he dropped like 50 G's on tank too, right? Yeah. Or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. And then they have, uh, they have a whole thing on uh, They have a whole thing on chains where it's like 
wears pink and they got like missing photos <laughs> of him everywhere. And, like people are putting them up like because they don't know what happened. But he uh that dude jumps from thing to thing to thing. He's a car guy now or a gearhead or whatever. And the he tanks. Just, like, yeah. He was doing the fish tanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah fish he tank guy. Then he was feeding the lizards, other lizards for a while. Like he put them in there and they're <laughs> killing each other. But he uh he's looking for lightning to strike twice. I'm like, dude, it's not that complicated. Just find another guy with the number one podcast in the world. He's got talent, man. You're going to start fighting again and have be on there. 300 times and lightning can strike twice you know like he's yeah. got callen callen's you know a great personnel yeah, yeah. Well, i was saying uh he he was saying that he didn't even know callen started a new family and just yeah. having another baby or some shit <laughs> yeah he said callen showed up you show up with the baby good dad you know your wife had a baby like dude that's, <laughs> i knew why callen's wife had a baby i don't even know him so you know, yeah. I mean, like, there's no way that uh i actually i don't know shop nothing would surprise me you know um yeah but uh yeah, he sucks, man. Wasn't he Brandon sucks. Schwab hanging out with, like, Sam Tripoli and all those dudes also and shit? I think for a while, yeah. He tries to, he always tries to buddy up to anybody he thinks is going somewhere, you know? Like, he he is a good coattail rider, for sure, like I said. He, uh, but he, um, it was funny when I met Theo uh, Vaughn, I got to go, I was in San Diego, and uh, he's friends with Adam for 20 years, with Adam Hunter, so yeah. um, this is before I got in trouble by Adam. Um, but he, uh, <laughs> for my online antics. Um, I said, hey, do you know Theo Vaughn? He's like, yeah, I really was. I'm going to go to a show in San Diego. I said, can you get me backstage? And uh, he was like, yeah. So he hits Theo up and asked. He said, yeah, let me come back and meet him with my uh, fiance and her friend. And, you know, so I look cool like I know famous people, you know. Yeah. So we go backstage and I said, hey, man, I have someone to hit you with. I know it's not really appropriate, but this is what I thought. Uh, why don't we do a podcast together? And you, like, since you already have a following, you're real funny. You do all the jokes and I'll just parrot everything you say. I said, I'll just copy everything you say, and then we'll split the money 50-50, and you can still fly out to do it, you know, this and that. And I see him getting, like, really uncomfortable when I'm saying this to him because he doesn't have to say, like, dude, I'm not doing that, you know? And I was like, I figured, I said, but then I thought, you know, but you're already doing that with Shab right now, so it's like, it'd be dumb for you to do it two people, and he lost it. Like, his manager, like, spit <laughs> his drink out or whatever. And his manager was like, dude, I cannot believe you're going to propose this to him the minute you meet him, you know? But it was all just a joke, like, to set him up for it, you know? But... I could tell like Theo was trying to be nice. He's like, yeah, I don't know, man. We, we can, we can talk about that. And I was like, you know, I mean, you could be all the, the jokes and I'll just, I'll just sit there and do nothing, you know, like contribute nothing. And I said, but you already have a job. So then he started laughing. And then it was funny. He goes, yeah, Brendan's got a, uh, he's got a tough road ahead. That's all he could say. So. <laughs> it was like, a Mark Harley guy. call in. <laughs> <laughs> call in. Yeah. Yes, I had you know. Once I found out Sean was on the stream, I'm like, I got him, man. I was I was mid workout. It's <laughs> um, awesome, but uh, had to do it for Sean for sure. How you doing, man? Hanging in there, buddy. How you doing? Did you ever get any of your money from from Bapa, or is he still sticking it to you? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I got a little bit of it, and then I just like finished it. The whole process takes super long, but I just finished like sending in the final documentation where I had to like. They're like, we need like an itemized list of like every fucking hour you spent with Brendan. So I had to like, luckily, I took so many fucking pictures of this guy. I can like, with evidence, be like, I was with him 50 <laughs> hours in this fucking city, you know? Yeah. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna have to write a nice check to me just because it's like, he doesn't follow any labor board rules whatsoever. You know, it's like normally right. clock, clock in, clock out, overtime, all meal breaks. <laughs> like he doesn't do any of that. So. Right. It was just the work of actually, if you can document it and be like, he made me, you know, work a thousand overtime hours without pay or whatever. Yeah, I don't think you can do that in California. They don't play those games out there, man. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe West Virginia or something, but not out there. So. Right. And my, and my lawyer friend, Rob, who normally represents, like, employers, he's like, I fucking hate the labor board, you know, except if it's a right. friend. Of Kevin, but I, I, he's like, they're fucking, they make it impossible, you know, for yeah. the company to come out on top so yeah we'll for sure we were talking earlier about how the how the uh chains or the reddit page like turned on you and they turned on me too like oh dude, I, I wasn't aware Cause, yeah cause they, 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 they turned on me i'm just like fuck you guys you know right. they, they turned on me because i had the the crazy idea to suggest they do a t-shirt to benefit a homeless shelter here in indianapolis and i said like i got a guy that printed yeah. for nine just doing some kind of shop shirt for 10 bucks and we could raise like 5,000 bucks. And dude, I was, they went nuts. It was like, you're trying to monetize the site. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. I'm like, you like, and they're like, you're just a hater. You're a bad as child. That was the one that hurt me the most. I told them like, I'm as bad That's as child. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I'm yeah, not because... as bad as child, but okay. Like, it, uh, 
Yeah, but yeah. They, they get they they get when they get mad, it's a thousand to one, man. They go off on you. So right, and, and there's, there's a lot of you know, like so. This one post recently, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I just like. I happen to still be getting, I actually got banned from Reddit because some guy was like threatening <laughs> violence in my DMs. And like, and I go on his page, I swear to God, this guy's like, fuck all, oh, oh, fucking, oh, I'll be Sushant, I'm not a fighter, but like, I, I'll say, I'll be like, I'll meet you. And per, if, if some guy wants to fight off of Reddit, I'm like, show up to the gym, you know? And then I go to, show to the Reddit, gym. The first picture is like, his, his fat, his fat stomach with like his cock out, like he's like, his whole Reddit page <laughs> is like, talking about, like, I'm like, so I'm like sending this shit to him. I'm like, hey, you cuck faggot, like in the DMs though. And then they banned me from like stuff I sent in. So I'm like permanently banned off Reddit for like this guy fighting the violence. So I'm like, hey, you realize you got like the first picture on your page is your fat like stomach with your tiny dick in your hand saying you're going to like wipe the jizz off another man's cock. <laughs> oh, yeah. anyway, so I'm, I wasn't able to comment on this, but the most recent post they put was my girl Luana takes a picture with Mike O'Hearn. And, and I was like, I set them up. Like, I'm friends with Michael Hearn, and I go visit him on set of this movie. I'm like, take a picture together, and then Luana, you post it and say, like, I said yes, like, he proposed to me. And it's such a clear joke, right? It's like uh, the most obvious fucking joke satire, like me and Mike are friends. I'm commenting on it, like, baby, don't hurt me, you know? Like, and these fuckers posted on, on the subreddit, 99.9% .9 of them thought it was real. They're like, what the fuck is you doing? Oh my God, she married Michael Hearn. I'm like, there's like one person like, are you guys that fucking retarded? Yeah. But it's true. It's like, they are that autistic where it's like, oh, you guys like, you get that Brendan's a bad person, but you're also like, the nuance escapes you, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. like you're saying, when, when it's like, hey, we get that you don't monetize this up, but there are good causes that you can like, everybody can't chip in five bucks and do do something great, you know? Right. Well, that's what I told him. I said, okay, how about we all, because uh, I, I started it off, I'd give a $250 uh, prize to whoever came up with the best Brendan themed shirt, but yet I'm trying to make money. Also, then I'm like, how about we all just give $5 a piece then to this homeless shelter and I'll start by giving 500, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh yeah, you're a grifter. You're trying, you're, and I'm like, how is that a grifter? I, I don't, I'm so lost, you know, I get, uh, yeah. But, and then, uh, you can't defend yourself either. Cause then you're like, you're like, I'm arguing on Reddit with, with these anonymous trolls who are right, never yeah. going to back down. You there's know? nothing to, yeah, there's no material to work with. I did have a guy on Facebook. I'm notorious for getting into it with people on Facebook. And I like, dude, I don't, it's no holds barred. If you start with me, I send you a message, a DM like, dude, Listen, I'm really going to hurt your feelings, so you should stop, because they'll just start talking shit for no reason. I'm like, I don't want to do it. Like, please don't make me. And so this guy was drunk and started talking shit. Like, that's why you got your – I love when they say that's why you got your ass kicked in the UFC. I'm like, so what? You are, yeah. <laughs> or they say stuff about steroids. I'm like, so you're telling me I look like I work out and take steroids. I don't know right. how that's meant You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, um, People they, don't realize guy, how impotent of a diss that is. It's like – like, cause I'm also, I'm open about it. You're open about it. It's like, right. you, got, you got to work with something else, man. Cause I'm not claiming to be natural. So that just right. falls so flat. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't. Yeah. But I had a guy, he missed my most recent one. He said something to him and I looked on his page and saw his mom had died three days earlier. And so I put, uh, <laughs> Hey dude, tell your mom, thanks for coming to my fight last weekend. And I posted, I posted a picture of a skeleton and, a, <laughs> and, a theater, and uh, like put it on there. And then he started threatening to kill me. Like literally he was going to kill me in this and that yeah. or whatever. And I was like, dude, I warned you. I sent you a message, DM'd you, said, I'm going to hurt your feelings real bad. Just stop. Like you're again, I've yeah. never lost on the internet. Like I've never lost in a, in a Facebook battle because yeah. like I, I will go to your mom just died, you know, like, um, yeah. And, and uh, you know that also, I mean, you should know if you're like, just by your persona and right. you establish that, I feel like it's like, it's like, don't you have the backstory on me? Don't you? And I'm like, right. and then, and then you get, I mean, the warning is a real courtesy, you know? Right. And then to be offended. Also, if, if I was posting about my, cause like I've had people come after my, it's like, Oh my, my dad, like people have said that kind of shit to me. And it's like, but you're also an anonymous stranger on Reddit. So it's like, I, like, what am I, you want me to get mad. So like the right. last thing I'm going to do is show you any sort of anger. I'm just going right. to like, that's cool that you resorted to that thinking that's going to hurt my feelings, you know, but yeah. imagine if I blew up, what the fuck? Oh, you know, like, it's like, well, you post it on Facebook, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, I get them all the time with, when they say something real hateful to me, I always say, you seem upset. And that, dude, that gets them every time. I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, because you think this or that. And I'm like, I've never seen this one this upset over an internet post before. And just like by staying cool, they can't take it. Yeah. Yeah, so, I got a my, question uh, for you too, real quick. Asked me repeatedly <laughs> to stop destroying people on the internet. She's like, listen, like, that was really overboard. Like when I hurt somebody's feelings real bad. 
But yeah. I just I always promised I will, then don't. And I turn around and just, but I always warn him. I did give her the courtesy of warning. Like I'll say, hey, just take that post down from my page. Like if I post a picture of me and my son, don't say something negative about my son. You know right. I mean? Like or whatever. Like, and so I was telling him, like, hey, go ahead and delete that. I don't want to hurt your feelings. They're like, oh yeah. Then I'm like, well, if you're talking about my kids, let's talk about your kids and how many chromosomes they're missing. You know? <laughs> right. And, and, and that's, yeah. <laughs> You play by the same rules of like, I feel like I'm being fair. I don't feel like right. I'm going after anybody like unfairly. It's just if you want to, like you set the rules for the match that you want to have. And if you're coming at me, a picture of my son, then right. we're actually bomb yeah. Right. Yeah. Even if she is dead. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got a question for you two heavyweights right now. Uh -huh. yep. So you guys used to be enemies, correct? Back in when uh, Mark Harley was days, working. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in the good old days when Mark Harley was working for the Antichrist himself. But yeah. my, my thing is, since you guys are friends, you know, you're, you're, my enemy of my enemy is my friend type shit, you know, and all that good well, stuff. I really like Sean. I, I like Sean's person, regardless of what he says about me. I think he's hilarious. And, you know, yeah. and I think. So you've uh, always liked him from the beginning. No I matter. I don't really know much about him. Like, it's just when you're when you're working for Shab, any name that comes up, it's like Red Bar, McCorkle, you know, like he's like, oh, don't listen to that guy's crazy. <laughs> yeah. like, you just. You, you got to realize this is like you're in a you're in a fucking uh, vacuum a bubble of like everyone else is trying to like ruin my life. And so I'm like, OK, right. and then like <laughs> by the eighth person that you hear this, thing, you're like, huh, is everyone out to get you or maybe you're just an asshole? You know, what, what <laughs> right. would Shab say about McCorkle specifically? He just, you know, okay, so what's funny about McCorkle and I think, uh, Sean, you've, you've picked up on this is his approach to you is to be extremely dismissive. Even right. to ask his jealousy of you. And he does that about a lot of people. Um like but the times that he ever what did he bring you up he's like what is he like the the best uber driver in right and it's like, <laughs> what i thought about driving an uber just so i could post it one day like for <laughs> right um and so anytime i don't like he, and again this is similar to like like red bar like i don't know who the fuck red bar was you know i didn't interview with him but like if you bring him up in the studio it's almost like it's like the boogeyman it's like what don't you <laughs> Right. Like I remember before I knew McCorkle, I'd hear his name get brought up, and it was like you could feel the tension in the room. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like 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 Brendan's like trying to smile, you know, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like that's what it was funny because Mitch Rowe, I told them earlier, Mitch Rowe told me, hey, don't worry about it. I warned Brendan not to ever say anything back to you. I was like, why did you do that, dude? And he's like, I said, I've been trying to troll him forever, years, and he won't say anything back, like absolute years, and. Uh, but she, like, but she was like, dude, I don't want to have him like crying himself to sleep at night. Like if you really start going off on him, I was like, well, it's too late for that. Like I've already said about everything you can say, but I can't get a reaction for nothing from him, man. Like sometimes I start feeling like a dick. Like I'm like, he hasn't said anything back. Like other than. Yeah. So like, one of the things that I will say, like to be an armchair psychologist is like, as a sort of the, the kind of narcissist he is, is he rarely goes at anybody who has like equal playing field or an advantage he loves to go after people who he employs who is like socially underneath him right um, like so if there's any power dynamic differential which is like sean has free reign of the internet and is an amazing writer so that would be like he, he he's aware of the black pit the black hole that he would have to sink his feelings into in order to engage with Sean. he knows that he so he has to be dismissive but that doesn't be he'll try to play that off as like i'm not i'm just a nice guy i don't respond it's like whoa you talk yeah. shit about people privately <laughs> and you talk shit about people beneath you that you can just cut off you know because like with me right. once i get uppity he can just fire me when once i'm like in the group chat like correcting him on shit or something you know it's like i got fired because i was like hey i actually didn't fuck that up you did or you know like <laughs> the, the most yeah. simple response to him that involved not like taking all the blame or not like making him you know it never you weren't a yes out. man you're saying hey man as a bro i hold you accountable and he you fucking can't, you, you simply won't survive around him as a non-yes man so to answer your question i guess there was some there was just a few funny lines and, and i know mitrion because like what was funny was why who else was on that fight campaign with mitrion um barnett or was mitrion yeah, been on a few. was there the one time i don't know what's his name Josh, Josh Barnett. Barnett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because they're he's really smart too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I remember these guys, so they, they Mitrione comes off as very clever, and Barnett like was seemed really intelligent to me. And they're both giving you props. Right. Like McCorkle's so funny and he's so clever. And uh I, I remember uh Mitrione is like, oh, uh McCorkle's a verbal chef, and Sean was sitting there like, <laughs> like he's like, <laughs> like and I forget if he said that on stream or in private. 
like to me. Um, but he said that at some point I was like, Oh, and it's, you know, like, again, when you go on these diatribes, it's like, I'm always getting entertainment out of whatever Sean's posting. So like, of course he has the respect of these guys who like him, but Brendan, you can tell is just terrified of ever engaging with him. So he has to be like, you know, and also like, I mean, realistically, Sean, you think you could be like in your peak and Brendan's peak, you feel like you would hand him. Oh, murder. Yeah. Fight. Yeah. Fight wise. Yeah. Yeah. uh, So it's like, and you know, you're a good looking guy. You're bigger than him. You're funnier than him. Like you don't, and you do, I'm saying the average person doesn't understand the depths of his jealousy. Cause you're like, he plays it off so well as like, I don't even care. I mean, I'm driving a Ferrari and I, you know, my wife's hot. Like the jealousy that I've seen from him towards other people. We're like, are you seriously fucking like jealous of this? Like guy who got to have better set than you opening up or what, you know, whatever it is, right. His, his jealousy knows no bounds. So. I remember one time they called it on things. uh, When you first started working there, um, you had said something to correct him and you were right. I don't remember what it was, but you were right on whatever it was. And somebody posted that video and said, Mark Harley won't be around long. (laughs) <laughs> like that was the only comment they made, you know, like he won't be around long because you didn't, like, you, you didn't back down from whatever it was. Like, what do you right. like? No, that's like, no, that really is what, you know, whatever Yeah, it was. I remember, well, you know, there was a few moments like that. I remember one of them was like an Andrew Tate video where like at this point I was working for him and I was just like, the joke's funny because he said, he's like, and I'm not defending everything Andrew Tate says. I'm just saying there was a joke. He goes, he goes, there's some kid I'm reading the newspaper. He memorized pie up to 200 places. That's great. But how, you, how the fuck are you supposed to get laid memorizing pi, spitting 200 decimals to a bitch in a club? And I'm like, that's just like a funny <laughs> line. Right, it's yeah, not yeah. a 12-year-old. And, and Brendan and Brian are both like, oh, no, that's not funny. No, you can't joke about kids. Over the line, yeah, because what? <laughs> like, leave the kid well, alone. He's I hate a nerd. That I, go, yeah. I hate that kid, shit. I hate realize that realize the kid shit. doesn't exist, right? Like, this is a made-up kid for his bit or that he read in a newspaper. And then also it's like, bloop, bloop, rewind to Shab going, uh, talking looking at some gamer kid there's this famous clipper goes right, yeah. things you fuck. he goes you did the same exact thing you took a 16 year old who's like i'm making a hundred grand a year and he's like that's great how many chicks you fuck you made the same joke and so there's right. there was a few moments like that but even before i met him do you know i made him this diet plan and shit because chappelle lacy was like um yo we're trying to do this weight loss challenge let's get like um could you make me and brendan a diet and a workout program so i sat down for like two hours and like wrote everything out like I was hyper specific and gave them options. And then he brings it up on the fighter and the kid, like without ever having met me, he goes, Hey, can we talk about your boy's diet? He got it all fucked up. Like he, he put way too many carbs in there. He's going to make me fat. Like, but like he starts, I'm like, and I didn't even know about it. I just know that Chappelle Lacey, all of a sudden I get a FaceTime from Chappelle Lacey. And I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He's like, Hey man, we're here in the, in the studio. Like with Brendan, he had a question about your diet. I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, Oh yeah, man, there's too many carbs. He's like, I'm like, how many do you think are in there? And he's like, he cited some number. I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure it was, you know, it's like 300 versus 220, whatever it was. He's fucking it up, misquoting something I wrote. And it, but I'm like, I don't have the context to realize he's even talking shit about me. And then like later on, I'm like, two years later, I'm like, oh, that guy was like bringing me up without meeting to be like, Mark doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Diet he's trying line. to make you a lol, a lol cow, basically. Right. With So, but he does that to everybody. So I'm not taking personal, like, Offense him. I've seen him do that to every person where it's like, misquote me when I'm not there. And Chappelle Lacey fucked up by like, he's like, I'll call him right now. That's funny. Oh, you said Mark's diet won't work. Right. <laughs> I think Mark knows what he's doing. Could be wrong, but he literally sets up the clip by being like, now look, I've done every diet. I know my shit. I, got, I grew up in gyms. You know, he's always like, yeah. Uh, Whatever crazy. happened but, to bag flip? Dude, he's killing it. Yeah. Like, he, he just was, I call him Arena Boy now because. And he's super humble about it too, but he like was just he just like crushed like an arena to open for Burt Preischer. You know what I mean? Like oh nice. He's great uh. at comedy and he's really humble and self-aware. And I think um <laughs> Bapa's worst enemy, like like Sean, you'd consider yourself kind of a blue collar guy, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Unfortunately. Lives in Indiana, of course he does. <laughs> yeah. Like there's this there's and I'm not saying that you lead with that or you're like, oh, I'm fucking blue collar and here's my American flag, but like there's an element of like you kind Res- of walk the walk of this blue He respects the everyday man. Yeah, and like, yeah. it's something that Brendan wants so bad to have authentically, but like Shane Gillis has it, where he's like, I own one pair of pants and a pair of shoes. Like, they're like the non-flamboyance, right? Of like a blue collar guy. You can't wear like, Gucci I- though, man, doing that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, right, so he wants he wants both worlds, where he like, he wants this kind of like blue collar, like Sean Strickland style recognition of like, he's just like a man's man who's tough and just cool, but he also like, needs to like be cool by wearing like fancy clothes and having fancy like 
<laughs> so it's this funny dichotomy. And I don't, I don't know if you know this, Sean, but when uh, uh, Sean Strickland came on, he roasted the fuck out of Brendan to his face. And they cut out like 30% of the episode. <laughs> of course. Because yeah. he was saying shit to like, and Sean's so good. This is the first time I ever met Sean. The first thing he says to me is, he goes, hey, what do you do around here besides having nuts the size of raisins? I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 but then I talked to him like, I talked to him alone for 20 minutes because that was like part of my job was I'd take the uh, the talent like when Brendan was doing the, like, doing the intro part of the show I, t I get to talk to each fighter for like 20 minutes one-on-one -on -one, so i'm like oh sean's actually a really cool down-to-earth guy like that's just his style to rip yeah. on stuff but like he was doing it to brendan on tape saying you know i'm trying to i'm trying to put people to sleep in the octagon this guy's putting people to sleep in a comedy club like like jokes <laughs> like that like he, he he fired off like 10 zingers right to the camera because he's like good enough to like you're on this podcast but he knew to like look right to the center canna and like deliver this wwe style kind of promo i shit. love that yeah and, like, yeah, he was so good at it, and the, the episode is so funny, and we're all, like, as his employees, we're listening to Brendan get ripped on and having to take him, like, oh, my God, like, please don't say any more because I'm fucking pissed my pants in front of everybody, you know? Like, but it was so uncomfortable, too, because you're like, this is so funny and so tense, because, and Brendan later admitted, he was like, I wanted to fucking jump over that, like, fucking desk and beat his ass. And, like, now knowing that he beat up Izzy out of sign, it's like, you would have got yeah. your ass. Like, yeah, good luck with that, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, he what? cut, like, 30% of that shit, though, you said? There was a, like, I was watching it, like, and knowing what was in there and the amount of jokes and the amount of, like, and I, it was honestly just Sean being good natured. Like, it, it, like, right. like, again, it's me. I'm not like, he was nuts, sad, he's just like looking and observing. You, you're on stereo. Yeah. Okay, I don't give a fuck. But if you're Brendan Schaub, you can't have that on your, you know, you can't have a guy right. just ripping oh. and you're not firing back immediately because you also, he, he's positioned himself as like, I'll light you up. I'll roast you back. But it's like, but you didn't. Like, and you bitched out, you know. Shab is such a trendy guy that, like, he just jumps from trend to trend. So, yeah, like, back in the day, it was trendy to get, like, expensive clothes and streetwear. And then now, Sean Strickland was probably ripping on him for being, being a girly man or whatever. And then it's not, he wants to, it basically, Shab, Shab takes all that shit super offensive if you, like, uh, question his, like, person you know sorry my girl just called me could you repeat what you just said <laughs> no i was just talking about like the blue it was back to the blue collar thing like shab so trendy yeah. and now the blue collar thing's trendy kind of like car okay, hard, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a great point he's suddenly a, this truck enthusiast and i think that's one of the greatest things that you can point out about him is like it's like, <laughs> like you devoted a whole channel to like now i'm a truck guy like um <laughs> after seeing kind of sean where like at the time he wasn't a champ and so it was kind of just like like he almost came off like you're like this guy's too crazy to like be in the ufc almost you know um and so then but then like he he gets his popularity and kind of like owns izzy um in the press conference and he and he suddenly like at the time it's almost like brendan felt like he was doing sean strickland favor you know what i mean right. like i'm right. sure he begged to have him back on um to to bump up his views but it was yeah it was just really funny and I think Sean's one of those guys that, again, he, he can sometimes contradict himself, but at the end of the day, he's like, he wears his heart on his sleeve and he's self-deprecating in a way that Brendan could never be. So it's like, that's the other part of it where it's like just the, the self-honesty is so difficult for a guy like Brendan, you know? Um, and I think like with McCorkle, it's like you, you kind of match your whatever grandiosity you have about like, I beat anyone in writing. It's like, you also match that with like self-awareness. You know, I mean, yeah. or whatever, like you're willing to self deprecate. But, people ask me all the time, like, if you fought Mark Hunt 10 times, how many times do you think you'd win? I was like, zero. Like, even <laughs> after the fight, you know, I so said that would never happen again if me and him fought again. You know what I mean? No, like, no, I'm no. Yeah. very I'm aware like, of my skill level. So. I'm saying, like, self awareness, though. Like, like Sean, you said, like, uh, you're leaving that one show with Adam Hunter, whatever the fuck that comedian yeah, name is. You know, you're leaving Rose, that. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of understanding at this point in time, he's starting to get a little too woke. He's starting to try to control the narrative, control what you say he, for his show because he thinks it's going somewhere like that, which is not. Yeah. All right. And so you're kind of branching out, and you're, I'm guess you're going to probably start going towards creating your own podcast again to some extent, right? Yeah, I have been. I had when I started. I didn't. I can't believe anybody would want to watch or listen to anything I say. Like, I still can't believe it, like, that anybody would watch it. But uh, I was doing it. I got my channel monetized, and then they demonetized me for posting my own interview that I did with somebody. They took away all my views, all my everything. I had to start over and that like took the wind completely out of my sails. Cause like it, when you're starting a brand new podcast, it takes a while to get 4,000 watch hours, man. Yeah. You know? So Was that like, shit owned by like Zufa or something. 
Uh, no, it was just they, I don't know, they said that, I guess the algorithm, I didn't even talk to a person, the algorithm said I was reposting other stuff, but a lot of those things were my stuff I had made and was on another channel, so I was reposting them to my new channel, you know? Right. Uh, like my videos or whatever, and so I didn't want to, if you, if you try to appeal it and you lose, they just delete your channel. They're like Nazis, man, or something, you know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, if you appeal it, so they're like, you can either accept our decision or appeal it, but if you appeal, then you lose your whole channel or something. Something like yeah. that. Like, I was just like, well, I guess I'll start over either way. You know what I mean? But it's, yeah. uh, I guess everything's got to be completely original unless, I mean, I don't know, like the channels that have right. just someone pointing at a picture like this and it's Joe Rogan's podcast and they get a million views. <laughs> and they're monetizing that. Like, how did they change it enough just by pointing at it? You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, and I, I had a video taken down too that was, um, I made a video about that clip that I was talking about where it's like, it's me responding to Brendan talking shit about me on the Fighter and the Kid podcast before I met him. And then, like, I showed what I sent to him, to, and it gets like automatically copy struck or whatever. And I'm like, I'm appealing and going, this is fair use because I'm responding to something that he said about me. And it kept getting denied. I'm like, I don't know how this fucking system works. I don't know that, like, yeah. Anything and that you're in the video, so that you would think that give you some rights. You're in the right, video. yeah, yeah, so but bad. you don't, and and you just yeah. you know, that's why they have these companies like Bet Pixels or whatever to like handle pixels, yeah. Um, they literally specialize that, and then they take a cut of your money. But it's like part of their thing is just to like claim everything, right. you know, that that could potentially get the money, you know, and yeah, you can. <laughs> Around, so. There's a guy that puts, I think it's the guy you guys were talking about earlier, he puts a lot of the Reddit page stuff on a YouTube channel, and he's convinced Mark got his channel deleted, I don't know if you did or not, but he's convinced of it, man, like absolutely convinced of it, in every video he's like, yeah, I spend all this time making my channel, and Mark Harley gets to take it, just, he constantly talks about it, I'm like, dude, that dude's Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, Don, that's really dude. funny you bring him up, because that guy is so fucking, like, hilariously pathetic because I had nothing to do with that. It's like, you think I wouldn't own that? But like, I also convinced him that I showed up to his apartment. Like somebody found his address <laughs> online and like sent him a DoorDash. And then I'm like posting pictures like I'm outside. Like, like, so somebody got a fucking, like. I've, done, I've totally actually done that before. Cause he told me, he told me he was going to break my arm. Like he would, like we went back. <laughs> and this was like, again, he was trying to be my friend. Like when all my drama went down, like he was, he was like reaching out to me like, Yo, man, what's up? I just want to help you. And That's fucking like, weird, bro. That's fucking weird. Right, shit. and you just, you know, you like, it's not like I, I'm not saying I'm um super naive, but like, you just don't assume that people are like reaching out to be like, hey, man, I I get you, like, and then they're gonna just like, no, they're fucking fuck weird. The first time I'm like, what do you have to gain by that? You know, like I'm not, I'm yeah. like, I like you did it, you did that much work just to like make a shitty video about me, you know? Um, but this guy's like. <clears throat> He's made so many enemies by just being a, a talentless jackass who, again, like, you know, people tend to have this pattern, like Brendan or whatever. It's like if people have this, you know, they're paranoid that, it, oh, this person's pulling the strings. But it's like, no, you've pissed off 100 people, you know? Right, yeah. So I, I'm just one of them, and that's how you have to have this mindset. Um, I didn't have anything to do with it, but, like, I remember he made a bunch of shitty videos about me, and then I saw that his channel got deleted. I'm like, good. Because, like, right. yeah, yeah. I told you to take that shit down, and you fucking didn't, and then you're, like, threatening me, you know? Um, like, he, you know, he literally said he was going to show up. He's like, I'll fucking break your arm. Like, you know, it's like, okay. And again, this is like, threat. Right. It's <laughs> like, this isn't a fighter either. This is, like, like this, like... He's an internet bat. shit lord. He's been around for a long time, causing problems, too. Yeah, so it was funny, because, I like, just going down that rabbit hole even was, like... Um, learning about who he really is yeah. in like the, the, the dark corners of the internet that he's uh, been existing in is like, <laughs> it's like icky almost. <laughs> there's like just some genuinely weird shit where you're like the kids were how old? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. His Amazon store and it's like why are you selling Disney toys that are like used next to Playboy? Hey man like, it, 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 was, it was genuinely creepy. Kind of make sure they fit man. You gotta make sure they fit the packaging. Yeah, he's uh, one of the guys. It's weird because like we have all these stern people on, and he that guy used to do a stern type show. So there's like all this crossover bunch, all these like little like micro communities. There's all these crossover of guys. So it's it's crazy. What'd you say his name was again? I knew that name, but I don't know how I knew it. You said it earlier. Jimmer Nam. Nam. Yeah. Hey guys, yeah. I know that name right now, but um, it was really great talking to you. 
Uh, yeah. Sean, thanks for having me on again. I'm sorry I couldn't stay on uh, longer, but uh, just let me know and I'll come on again uh, another time. Shout All out, right. Mark. Hey, we'll, we'll talk to you again sometime. Right. And Peace yeah, well, Mir, man. Mir, what do you say we uh, get uh, McCorkle out of here too? Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, man, Sean, uh, Sean, it was great having you on, man, dude. You had you had me laughing harder than uh, a guest in a long time, bro. I always feel like a real disappointment after I finish every podcast. No, I no, I no. I loved you, bro. You're awesome as fuck. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I've got to now that I have a serious uh, fiance. I have to be so careful about what I say anymore because. <laughs> Like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to embarrass her, her family. And I've, uh, right. I don't know. I'll send you guys it every week. I killed my grandma. Like stuff like that. Coming back <laughs> yeah, please. Life. I got to see that. I have to it's, see uh, that. Man. Dude. It, I didn't know when I did that stuff, the internet would never go away. Like I didn't know, you know, that it would always be there. So like, if you just Google my name and Nazi Google my name and, and I had to apologize. I fought in Poland. I said that I wasn't, they asked, I have a, apparently a Nazi Eagle on my chest. I didn't realize it was a Nazi <laughs> Eagle when I got it, a tattoo. But I covered up my ex-wife's name with an uh, eagle, and it turns out it's a Nazi eagle. I didn't know they had an eagle. <laughs> yeah, and right. So um, I asked the tattoo artist later on. I was like, "Dude, did you know that was a Nazi eagle?" He said, "I just thought you were a Nazi." And I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." Like, you might be a Nazi <laughs> I just thought you were a Nazi, man. I was like flipping through his book. I was like, "Oh, I like this eagle." So yeah, so I get it. And I told everybody I just covered up the name of a ruthless dictator with a symbol for another. Once I realized it was a Nazi eagle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they asked me when I'm in Poland, they asked me if it was a Nazi eagle, I'm getting ready to fight, you know, Pujanowski. Pujanowski, they're little, yeah. They're a little sensitive about the whole uh, Nazi the thing. The Fourth Reich will be rising. Yeah, so um, I told them, I said, no, no, I'm not a Nazi at all, but I do agree with Hitler on gypsies. I hate them. <laughs> and um, I thought gypsies, gypsies are sweet lot. people, man. What are you talking about? They're only, yeah. they're only so dirty, okay? Don't yeah, worry they about live it. On the outside Once you get past the smell, smell, you're straight. <laughs> yeah. But I, I thought literally gypsy was a lifestyle. I didn't know it was a race. Like, I thought it was like yes. a lifestyle, like, like carnies or hippies. And so the guy's like, why don't you like gypsies? Like, they always tricked me out of my money in the tents on the outskirts of town. <laughs> like, I was like saying, like, they gave me the wrong fortune. They told me the wrong fortune. Like, I thought I had no idea. And so then my agent calls me the next day and said, did you just make a Nazi joke in Poland? Let me get it. Like, let me get this straight. You're joking about Nazis in Poland the night, day before you fight a Polish national hero. And I said, dude, I'm talking about gypsies. He said, gypsies is one third the population of Poland. And, I, and then I had to actually Google gypsies. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Like, I, I would love to see, I don't know where that interview is, but I had to go on the Polish ESPN and say I didn't hate gypsies. Like, it was like the greatest, the greatest thing ever. But um, yeah, I just uh, drawing the crowd, drawing tickets. I respect it. I see. Yeah. But anything, like I said, you Google my name and anything controversial in an interview will come up. You know, like uh, it's it's insane. And I just try to make people laugh, man. And sometimes people didn't get it. So. Yeah. You yeah. Made me laugh today. And we didn't get into anything like too personal. You brought up your ex wife. And now it's something oh, you got I'll say whatever about her. Yeah. She sucks. You got a new uh, fiance. So congrats on that i appreciate it man and yeah. uh your father so good on you we are too so um yes, sir. you're you're a true you're a true g man you're you're a good dude and uh you're very a entertaining gladiator. Man. yeah you're a gladiator yeah all right buddy i appreciate it guys well uh, i'll come on again sometime soon i'm glad to know you guys aren't nuts half the no. podcast <laughs> i do the people are completely crazy and then uh like that's why i'm a little tentative at first i'm like yeah i don't know man like what do you mean by on. crazy like when they get you on a show what do you mean by crazy i mean like i had some dude talk to me one night and then he only got four views on his last podcast like and i didn't know you know like he didn't say that he like was just some guy you know what i mean or whatever <laughs> and i guess he had never done a podcast before and he's like can i have you on and then i looked he only had one other video post it was him and his friend and it was like four thing like four views and i was like wait this guy's just starting a podcast with me but it was like <laughs> I, I always like I try to like help people, you know, because I like I don't think I'm too big for anything, you know. What I mean, they yeah. passed me on when I was nobody, you know. So, right. Um, I try to do that, but no, you guys are actually cool. So I was pleasantly surprised. Normally, people are like, some of them are weird, man. Like some of them are, yeah. or they'll start texting me the minute I get off. They'll start texting me and texting me the whole next oh, day. Oh like, god, so like, damn. You know, yeah. you, come out, like you should come out to Phoenix sometime. I'm like, dude, listen, I just did the podcast. <laughs> like, calm down. You, know? you should come to my house in my basement. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes in Phoenix, sometimes. I, I now, say sometimes when they say that, I'm like, hey, maybe I can wash your car while I'm there. Like, <laughs> like that, and they don't, like, they are like, what? And I'm like, nothing. I just figured, you know, while I'm doing your favors, you know, so. We're just, we're just two uh, schlubs on the internet. We're up and comers, I guess. So we do appreciate you coming on and doing it. You know, it was, it was fun, man. man. It was, it was just, an honor. Uh, to have you on a show 300 times, you might turn it into a uh, fairly successful podcast for a while until one of you gets accused of raping 30 people. So. <laughs> Yeah. Don't worry, <laughs> we'll, we're gay, so it's all right. Well, if, if, if we, if, rape. Last if thing, we keep one thing that Adam got mad at me about 
is that I put on uh, I put on <laughs> on the internet that Bill Cosby, like ten of his ninety victims, uh, admitted <laughs> they were lying, and I was like, that's like finally justice. No man that's raped eighty women should ever be accused of raping ninety. <laughs> and uh, Adam's like, dude, you're just going too far with the jokes. And I'm like, dude, calm down. <laughs> Like, I was making stuff worse than this long before I ever was on your show, you know? So. Good shit, man. And I'm if glad you, you ever get to, like, it. Rogan level, you could be our shop. We'll have you on 300 times. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, so good. <laughs> That'll work. So. All right, brother. I appreciate oh, you. Do yeah, you want to plug anything, uh, like an Instagram yeah. or a Twitter or anything? God, I just, I don't know. I always tell people just search my name on YouTube. Google. It'll probably come up with something funny. But, uh, no, I'm always, I'm always, almost always uh, suspended on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, for saying something so like it it's kind of hard to sell dogs when you're always suspended on facebook like an instagram like i'll be trying to advertise or respond to them. I'm like oh i'm suspended from responding for three weeks you know so <laughs> yeah it makes it a little tough but uh yeah no unfortunately i'm a shameless self-promoter but i got nothing going on so it works out so, but, sounds good brother well, sorry man thanks have a good night man peace out, catch you later peace yeah. awesome right. dude Till what'd you think time? mir I yeah. loved them. They were fucking yeah. badasses, man. Both of them. And Sean Dude. especially. He was an insane fucking interview. I loved it. Yeah, you got to check out some of his stuff, Mir. Because I, I was the one who... Uh, I've been following that dude for a long time. He makes me laugh my ass off. There is tons of funny stuff that he's done online. I, I got to so see he, the fight he did, if, though, bro. I got to see that main fight he did when he broke that dude's arm or whatever. And, and like that was a huge ordeal. Made him international star. I got to watch that, then. Yeah, I mean, he's got in the ring and then outside the ring, he, like the post-fight interviews, all of his shit's funny. Um, so check him out. That was Big Sexy Sean McCorkle. And uh, we're going to be coming live again Thursday. We've got a surprise guest for you guys. You might, might not know who she is, but she'll be uh, she'll be a great guest. So just uh, subscribe and tune in then. Till next, next time. time. <laughs> Peace. Yes, sir. Peace.